Mics and Bands for game number one. SK Telecom versus KT Rolster here on Champion Summer and Thresh. The first ban against Pickaboo. Not too shocking, he is a pretty magnificent Thresh player. Now we are on patch 5.13. I was wondering if That's we'd right. see some of the Callista uh, bands start to drop off with the nerfs to Callista, but we're not going to see that. SKT actually banning Victor. That is a bit of a surprise. Nogne has shown a preference for Azir. The Rumble ban that is necessary against Martin. Okay, I, I'm sorry, we're going really faster. There's the Azir. So they're targeting Nogne's champion pool. They, they're trying probably to put him onto Cassiopeia. Hmm. Now, in this game, we've seen that Wolf doesn't really play Thresh, and that Someday is not anywhere near as good of a rumble as Marin is. So you want right. to take that champion away, especially with the buffs to, uh, to Leandri's Torment on this patch via the AP itemization. It does become, become very high priority. Gragas first picked by SKT. For Bengi. Yep, not too surprising there, but Score with a lot of good jungle options remaining. Yeah, and Score, he doesn't even really prioritize Gragas. He likes Rek'Sai and Echo. Yeah. And Evelyn. So that isn't going to hurt them too much. Rek'Sai is Score's most played champion this season, and they could take the Kogma early. The Kogma stock has been rising drastically in Korea recently, mostly uh, because of KT's successful use of that champion. Yeah, Arrow's been playing a lot of it lately. They've been getting a lot of wins. We'll see what SKT decides to go for. They still have Sivir and Corky to choose from, so I'd imagine it would be one of those two. But do you just go for, like, Alistar, Maokai at this point? Ezreal, I mean, Ezreal, of course, this is 5.13. The Runeglaive Ezreal's not quite as strong as it was, but is it still strong enough to pick up? Uh, I guess if you're Faker. <laughs> yes, sure. I mean, it's... It didn't actually change that much on this patch, honestly. Mm. Uh, it just doesn't proc Ludens anymore, which, yeah. to be fair, is a pretty substantial a pretty nerf. Change. But it's still very strong, no doubt. You're still going to be annihilating people with that True Shot Barrage. Right. Well, True Shot Barrage still procs Ludens, so you got that going Oh, there you, you go. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's nice. <laughs> Yeah, and we've seen the way that Faker uses Ezreal, too, in this mid lane. Using that true shot barrage is sort of like a, a way to sort of be part of ganks that happen in other lanes, and he's very, very effective with it because he can hit it so consistently. They're going to grab the Annie for Wolf as well, too. Now, the so. last time that SKT picked Ezreal, what happened was they were playing against Anarchy. Mickey locked in Yasuo, and they made a pivot and put Bang onto Ezreal, and yeah. then put Faker onto Aurelia. So they're trying to see what could go on right here in terms of this pick. Now, Lulu will be picked. We don't know if that's going to be, well, it will be a mid lane Lulu, actually. Could be a top lane Lulu, but we don't really see that in Korea. We see it a lot in Europe. I haven't seen it for a long time, at least. Yeah. yeah. Still a possibility. Uh, with some of the itemization changes, maybe Lulu is, I, I'm not sure. I didn't expect to see that with AP changes, but we do have the Braum. Yeah. Now, I'm a bit skeptical that SKT picked this Ezreal without picking the Braum at the same time. Usually you do that so Unbreakable doesn't just deny all of the True Shot barrages in terms of team fighting. Right. It could also be as well that SKT wants Pikachu to play Braum because they feel like he can't make as many plays with that. Maybe a champion he's not quite as familiar with. We haven't seen him play a lot of it. He hasn't played it yet this season. Yeah. So that is, that is true. But also, there's the other side of that coin is do you want Pickaboo, who's one of the most skilled players on KT, to be the one who you're relying on to stop the True Shot Barrage, because he's probably mm. going to do that most reliably, right? That is true. Is it is it better to have him potentially stop a True Shot Barrage than be on Alistar, though? That's the thing. Because it does kind of deny the Alistar. So Oriana Nar, so that Ezreal will be going down to the bot lane, so that Braum pick starting to look more and more like a bait from SK Telecom. Yeah, and the, the Oriana, there's not really a good way to get the ball onto the opposition right now, but they've got plenty of engage with Andy and Gragas for the follow-up NAR ultimate. Uh, or he just a very stable pick. Yeah, and uh, I believe still Faker's most played champion. Ever. Right up there, yeah. yeah. Ever, yes. Yeah, that's what he was known for. In fact, uh, players like uh, Gang by Mom have said they were inspired to be a pro player from watching Faker's Oriana. Are we going to see a Juggernaut here? This would be... Very interesting. They have a lot of peel for the Kog'Maw already. Nagne maybe just trying to play a very safe champion in that mid lane. Still, with the Shen, they be over really, overly reliant on peel He's and kiting with this composition if they choose the Shen instead of the Maokai. He's okay. played a bit of it. And unless... It just doesn't seem like KT, aside from Kog'Maw, are going to have a lot of damage here. If they, if they lose Kog'Maw, they're going to lose the team fight. That is true. That's, well, I mean, that's true with really any Juggernaut composition. Well, yeah. 
Um, especially, but you're right, especially when there's a tank in the top side instead yeah. of something like a rumble. Now, this is very interesting to me because if we think about how Ku lost to SKT, they chose a Cassidan and a Cassiopeia, champions with kind of a weak early game, and Faker was able to abuse that, kill the mid lane turret against Ku early, and that's when all the wards came in and Faker started really rolling onto the lanes. Yeah. Now, with the, the Lulu, it's a champion that Nogne's not going to be bullied with early. He'll have the wave clear early on. He'll have the harassment. So they can't really rely on Faker to get the same kind of roams in that he did against Ku. They also have the double globals in the top side, so they'll be able to respond very quickly to any movements on the map. And Juggermaw is still terrifying in the late game. Uh, so much damage can come out of that Kog'Maw. It's something that KT has played in the past, albeit not with Pickaboo. And the Braum pick... Still going to be good for peeling, but KT, they cannot engage with this composition. This yeah. is not a... So if they don't get uh, some good sieges set up or get to the Dragon with the Baron first, they're going to have a really hard time dealing with SK Telecom. That's right. Either way, it's a decent comp. Should be a good matchup. I'm really curious to see the build path that Nogne decides to go with with Lulu, but it is time, guys. Another battle in the Telecom War here in Korea. SKT versus KT. Let's get in the game and see who takes it. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. <laughs> SK Telecom versus KT Rolster. For those who may just be seeing this matchup for the first time, which is probably not too many of you, but just in case there are some out there, this is by far the biggest rivalry in Korean esports. Stretches back for uh, about a decade now. It's a, a little one over of, a decade. Yeah it's, yeah, it's one of the oldest rivalries in esports in the world, if not the oldest. So obviously there, there are some exceptions to that, teams that it's go back a long EU organizations time, too. like SK and Fnatic. Yes, yes, yes. Right, right. It's, uh, it's definitely way, way up there, and it's produced some great finals and great matches here in Korea in the past. Yep, across multiple games. And League of Legends is certainly no exception. I don't think that I don't think anyone's ever going to forget that summer 2013 finals. It was pretty darn great. Absolutely. So, fans of Wolf, but who isn't? It's an interesting Pick sport matchup. not a fan of Wolf. He's back for revenge. Well, I don't know. He seemed like he was kind of a fan in the intro thing. You know, still buddies, but uh, it is uh, Pickaboo coming back for, like you said, some revenge against his former team. Well, it'd be huge if KT could stop SKT here tonight, obviously. Yeah. Not very likely, but maybe there's that outside shot. They are the they are the last the last obstacle for SKT to that undefeated season, that's for sure. Pretty much. If they don't take him out, I don't think anybody else will. It seems very unlikely. So Pickaboo going in. We do see the lane swap coming through. And Pickaboo looking for that invade. Now, the last time he didn't find anybody jungling on his strong side, he went to mid and killed uh, Kuzan from Jin Air, but he's not going to play that aggressively at level one here today. A little bit more of a conservative approach. He's actually just going to recall and then head down into the bottom lane. I would imagine these teams or, are going to take some time to or what is kill each he other going out a to bit. Do? What is he going to do? This is very interesting. Look at Score's positioning right now on the Raptor. He's going to clear those out. We'll see if perhaps he wants to go for a very early gank. Yeah, well, Pickaboo signaled as he, that he's going down to river here. He's going to be seen by a ward, though. So I wonder. Uh, do they, they see that. Okay, so it's pinged oh, yeah. out. They see the ward placed down by SKT. So he's going on an early pink ward mission, actually. And that's just to make sure that Nogne is very safe. There can't be any big dive plays onto that part of the map. And he will now just help out someday, deal with this minion wave in the bottom side. That does help. Bengi, uh, not a ton of games on that Gragas, but 100% so far. Yeah, showing off some impressive mechanics, too. Yeah, surprisingly, from a, a player like Bengi, who's always been good, but not really the most mechanical player. Yeah, his flash body slams have been very good. Now, Score is going uh -huh. to see them with the <laughs> ward. Add that and trinket spotted. ward, fortunately, because Wolf and Bengi were not moving, and there was a stun loaded up so yeah. that's not going to be a kill onto this vulnerable Kog'Maw here 
in the top side. Arrow just going to be content with the wave pushing back towards him. I think it was going to be pretty helpful for someday in terms of helping getting him a, a bit of farm. Oh, nice taunt on to Bang. Pickaboo coming in as well, too. Bang has Arcane shift away, loses quite a bit of health. And that was like a max range taunt. you got to be a little bit careful when you go in there. Yeah, I'm wondering what kind of build Bang is going to be going this game because there's a lot of different choices you can make on Ezreal, clearly. If he's going to go and get greedy for a blue build, try and scale into the late game with a tier, or if he's going to go be doing something with a little bit more immediate impact because you have to be... SKT does have some nice scaling here. Against a team that's so crazy strong in the late game with that Kog'Ma, though, wouldn't you want to try to get an edge early? Yeah, and also the the dive from Ezreal, too. I mean, yeah. someday with this Shen could dive Ezreal if he has a tier early in this game, which might make it a little bit more, even more difficult to play. Let's we'll see what they do. Wolf down to bot lane now to help out Bang. You know, I'm going to be watching Pickaboo this. Uh oh, Wolf and oh Bangy on the invade. Pickaboo's there. Score's going to get some damage now. Wolf only oh. level two. Pickaboo nice level three. Nice Q for Pickaboo coming in. There's a knockup from Score as well. This could be first blood. It will be goes to Score, and Bangy comes back in again just for a bit of harassing. But Pickaboo, man, max range Q for that slow, did a lot. Yeah, and they had the level advantage coming in. Score. Of course, on that, Rek'Sai was able to suss out where SKT was, and even though there was a relatively safe invade, it ended up being punished. No one else able to respond on the map. Well, Score wants to make a play on the Faker here now, perhaps. Now they're going to try and they shut down Bengi. There. That's right, oh, Bengi in a lot of trouble. There's a knock up onto him. Chilling Smite goes down as well. Bengi gets stunned. Oh, barely flashes over the wall. Will the Prey Seeker hit him? It will, Whoa. but it doesn't do enough damage. Yeah, Faker a little Ooh. bit late there on the Command Protect. That was close. And yeah. this is how KT plays these days. We've seen what happened to Chaser in the last series. Once they actually got the ball rolling, they became this invasion force that would repeatedly force Chaser off of objectives, force him to blow his summoner spells, and they just absolutely took over the enemy jungle. And in a lane swap, it really enables KT to play this way because Pikaboo and Score can just be everywhere. Wow, well a great start for KT already. SK Telecom looking a little bit a little bit flustered, a little bit shut down. And against a team that Oh, he's going this tier. Be, yeah, this seems really risky. It is. He's going to be pretty inefficient against the Kog'Ma here as they come into lane. He's going to have a long ramp time. And again, the possibility of a dive once Shen hits six is very concerning, I would say, for Bang here. He's going to have to play very safely. Now, they have good wave clear, so they can turtle for a while. But how they're going to kill Arrow in this game it's going to be really difficult to actually finalize the kill onto the Juggernaut. Bengi is basically going to have to have a great ultimate because Wolves will just be cleansed with a QSS late in the game. So he needs to isolate the Kog'Maw and then collapse on him. Yeah. Well, for now, things quieting down a little bit. Yeah, Phage start here in the top side from Marin. So it looks like he wants to be able to kite out the Shen in the lane and constantly use his range advantage for harass. I just wonder how SKT is going to be able to uh, do as far as the early dragons go. If they're going to be able to contest those as well with that tier start. It's it's going to be hard. Uh, they need to be able to push up the lane. And like you said, the tier doesn't offer those combat stats early. Arrow going to have much more immediate effectiveness yeah. with the Trinity Force. Uh, Marin pushing all the way up to the turret. Which is to be expected. Shen, of course, with not exactly the best wave clear in the game. Wow, Bang taking a lot of damage. Wolf comes in. True Shot Barrage skims across Pikaboo, but doesn't do a whole lot of damage. They tried to go for a kill there on the support, but didn't quite connect. Uh, scores here. He's just going to clear out a ward as his Raptor buff is triggered. A lot of focus yep, or from Score on the bottom side of the map. This is a bit irregular for KT. Score's going to come back in. around. That's right, Bang. Chilling Smite goes down. Bang. Has a flash, he has summoner healing, may not even need to flash, doesn't look like it. Whoa, Pickaboo gets a bit too far forward. He is lucky to make it out with his life. Man, if True Shot Barrage was up now, that would be a dead Brom. That was incredibly <laughs> risky from Pickaboo. 
He's lucky to have lived through that. He also used his flash right there, but they got the summoner heal and the ignite out of SKT, so it was a net win on that trade. Someday, I mean, avoiding some of these boomerangs. He's doing actually pretty well, all things considered, even though he is dealing with Marin's ranged harass in this top lane, building up to that Sunfire Cape first. Yep. Keeping up for now, anyway. And having that bombing cinder does, of course, help him farm a little bit better under turret. So it's not great, but it could be worse. Yeah, I'm very curious to see how this Juggermaw comp works. We have not seen Juggermaw in Korea hardly at all recently. Yeah. It, it's still a strong composition, but I, th I suppose with the rise oh. of Kogma. Oh, well, Marn comes in to check the red, but score's already waiting for him. Marn in a lot of trouble. Score deciding not to engage. He's like, well, if you're here, there's got to be other people, but there weren't. Oh, now they're going to chase him wow. anyway. Someday coming in, tries the flash, can't get away. Nagne comes in with the slow. There's a glitter lance for the kill. And Nagne picks up one for himself. Super this. greedy from Marin. That was a yeah. pretty bad misplay to try and come in onto Score's red buff like that. Uh, no backup, no control over the mid lane again. KT, they went for this wave clear mid laner so that they would actually help contain Faker. Uh, and that is paying off in the fact that Nagne had the faster roam. Pickaboo was also in the mid lane at the time, so pretty big, uh, you know, you don't know where Pickaboo could be. Pickaboo could have been in the enemy jungle, or in, by the red buff too at that time. So Marin uh, playing that well around the vision that he had and the information that he had received because there was no one from KT in the bottom lane. Yeah. And now Marin's TP is down and someday has two teleports. This is the time to take Dragon to dive bang if you're KT Rolster. Well, it looks like they're certainly setting up to do one of those. Dragon control being taken pretty heavily by KT right now. And SK Telecom, I mean, I mean if you give up a teleport like that, it's kind of like saying, all right, you guys get the first Dragon. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult for them to respond to anything. And Whoa. Bang is very, very weak. As you can see, he had to go for a Vamp Scepter as his next item because there's just, he needs that sustain to deal with the poke coming in from Arrow. Pickaboo and Score starting to move through that bottom side jungle again. They're just camping the red buff at the moment. Well, you can see what a terrifying duo these guys are oh, right geez. now. Score finds Bengi yet again. Bengi goes in anyway for the body slam. Pickaboo coming up to try to help support. Red buff for score. It looks like they want to try to just prioritize that dragon. Stay safe for now anyway. Yeah, they don't have uh, Lulu in the mid lane, so they can't go for the dragon immediately. Yeah. But they may be looking for it now that the, the Athenes is complete for Nagne. Wow, Bang is like two ultimates away from death here. Well, they're just waiting for him to go back. KT knows that eventually Bang's going to have to retreat here. He may have that Vamp Scepter, but he is still getting pretty low. Very true. Oh, Pikaboo comes in. Blocking a lot of the damage going in onto Scores Arrow. Here. And Bang zoned right in. There's an auto attack and Arrow takes him out. Oh, that was beautiful. Zoned him forward with the ultimate so he could get into auto rage. That was a really nice play from Arrow. Yeah, Arrow's laning has been an issue for KT for a long time. But ever since Pikaboo joined the team again, they really have... Arrow's been doing a lot better in the laning phase. And Arrow's team fighting is actually quite good. Yeah. So it's just been about getting Arrow to live in lane that had, had been one of KT's problems. It was a big problem with Hachani. It was then made better with Fixer, and Faker oh. has to flash out of the chilling spite. Yeah, makes it out, but does have to burn that summoner. Well, KT up to a big lead right now. SK Telecom really having some issues. Now, they are getting chip damage in the top side, thanks to the range from the NAR. I'm a bit surprised that KT hasn't played more aggressively when it comes to the Dragon, but see if they just want to wait this one out. I'm a little bit surprised they just didn't take it after they killed Bang, you know? Oh, looks like they're going in now. Score could be in a little bit of trouble waiting for that Shockwave. There's the stun. Score gets out through the tunnel before the stun actually affects him. Yeah, they saw the Glitter Lance go down, and then what they wanted to do is bounce Score into the enemy team, but he has to, they draw out his Flash and a tunnel in the end. Pickaboo just everywhere on this map. Yeah. He actually R used his Glacial Fisher in topside. Huh. Trying to looks make like a plan to Marm, but it looks like it didn't work out. Yeah, KT needs to do something more than this. Uh, they've nearly 
They've had this teleport advantage. Sure, they've been doing well. They've been getting the invades, but they need to start taking objectives with it. Looks like Pikaboo used his exhaust and Score used his flash. Well, Score used his flash in mid, but it looks like Pikaboo used his exhaust up in top two. Yeah, so Summoner down as well as the ultimate. Um, remember, KT does not have reliable engage. They have to use flash to engage uh, with either Shen or Rek'Sai or Brahms. So they have to have objective priority. They, they need to be there first so they can kite and force SKT to engage on them. Or they need to set up a siege. Now they could just be waiting for the Trinity Force spike onto Corky, or onto uh, Kog'Maw. I'm just so used to saying that with Corky. <laughs> to do that. But they're in a really good position right now and they need to be more aggressive. Well, speaking of aggressive, Marin has been able to aggressively poke down that turret quite a bit. Oh, someday coming in with the taunt though. Marin needs to be careful here. He's got no Meganar. He's, he, he may have overextended here. Flash for someday, and he gets the kill in the 1v1. Marin playing things way too dangerously today. Yeah, he is. Not a good day for Marin so far. Already two deaths. He's trying to work up into that black cleaver. He's got it now, but that's not really going to help his team as Score comes in onto Bengi. Yeah, who got the red buff? Looks like Score was able to pick it up, I believe. Bengi pops him away with the ultimate, though. Looks like they'll let him go, but that's going to be mean potentially a big dive here in bot. Bottom tower's not down yet. now, pings down onto the dragon. Yeah, here we go. Teleport up for Marin. So he could try to do something here, but I think they're just going to have to give this one over. He's a black cleaver gnar. SKT <laughs> cannot team fight yeah. this right now because what is he going to do? Bang doesn't have any damage yet, so even if he shreds, there's no synergy early in this game. What SKT is saying with their black cleaver purchase, with their tier purchase, we want a long laning phase. We want to just farm this out. We want to get advantages, but the problem is Marin's already behind because he's been making questionable plays. So this Black Cleaver is going to take forever to do something against Someday. Someday's probably just going to build Randwin's Omen next and call it a day. Yeah, I mean, that's really all he needs to do against a team like this. And Marin's still continuing to push. If he can get down the turret, that'll help SK Telecom catch up a little bit in the gold at least. The turret is low. Yeah, playing a little bit more safely now. They don't know where a lot of the members of KT are at the moment. I really think that this KT strategy coming against SKT, this is definitely from them a reaction to what happened um, between Ku and SKT mm. with the Lulu pick. And they tried to ban Nagne out, so if he can make it work, then that might be enough. Oh, nice play. Body slam. Ah, Nagne manages to get out with his own flash, though. Close. That was actually a really tricky body slam. Came in at like yeah. a 90 degree angle. <laughs> well, Faker would have been able to land the shockwave. That would have been potentially a dead Lulu. And Agne able to flash out over the wall. Score in the mid lane right now. They're looking for some sort of edge. Actually, they're not. They're playing Nagne instead of edge. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's why they're looking for him. They're like, where we've got Nagne. Where's edge? Where's edge? I think right now Nagne is a better choice, though. <laughs> Certainly looking that way. Alt use, there's a knock up on a Faker. He's in a lot of trouble. Stun getting loaded up. No way Faker's getting out of this. And Nagne picks up another kill. Wolf in a bit of danger. He has huh. to back out. They cannot go into that bottom side jungle right now. That has been owned by KT for quite some time because they have the turret down and Bang just can't be useful. Now the siege coming in from KT. Yeah, at least, at least. They got the top turret. KT, though, responds by a mid turret as well. They've still got the lead in that department. This itemization is killing SKT. Yeah. There is no, res they can't offer any resistance, particularly when Orion is dead, for this Trinity Force Kog'Maw siege. And with Lulu, there's just nothing they can do. Yeah. Not much damage, not much survivability either. I mean, Marin's just useless in team fights. Yeah. And he's in a, a lot of trouble, actually, because Pickaboo and Score are coming up as well, too. Marin has his flash, but he may need more than that to get out of it. He's got Meganar for a few more seconds. Score coming in, gets pushed back by the ultimate Q from Pickaboo. Misses, has to use that exhaust. Nice three-man stun, but Score comes around anyway, and there's another kill for Someday. Oh, boy. This one is starting to get a little bit out of control. And when Someday gets fed, usually KT wins. This yeah. is a battle of carry top laners in this game. The ones that are given so many resources, and now Marin has spent so much of this, his gold on an item that has no relevance to what, how this game is going to play out. K, SKT is going to have to wait so long before they can even remotely stop a Siege, contest a Dragon, contest a Baron, and Someday hasn't even had to use his ultimate yet this game. Yeah. 
we're nearly 20 minutes in, and that hasn't even been a factor. KT is simply pl outplaying SKT all over the map. That's pretty impressive stuff. If SKT manages to win this one, it's going to be one of the better comebacks we've seen this season. Well, I mean, they came back in that game against Jenner. Oh, they definitely can. But the difference in that game, Doa, is that that game there was a rise played by Faker, yeah. and they had scaling. They had an advantage in terms of scaling. That's arguably they do have the Oriana, which will do more damage late game than the Lulu. But the Kogma is clearly going to be much more useful than the Ezreal for the foreseeable future, probably for the rest of this game. So it's not so clear cut that SKT is going to have a major late game advantage. I'd agree. Faker's going to be handed over this blue buff, it looks like. Dragon up in a minute 45, and KT already getting a little bit started with the vision around that. This tier is a big problem. Yep. It's starting to get a little bit of damage, but it's still going to be a long time. Uh, the Trinity Force may have been the better pickup here. Certainly, I mean, the blue build is, is strong late, but getting there can be a bit of an issue. And now Dog Mage is back here for Wave Clear Central. That tower not really taking any damage whatsoever yet. Yeah, pretty much, and SKT has to retreat for now. They were trying to get it because they need some sort of control to actually contest this next dragon, but... Well, speaking of control, all this jungle control has been letting Arrow just push up bot lane really far. Yep, he knows Pickaboo and and Nog, or Pickaboo and Score are there to back him up if he needs it. Bengi. Yep. Oh, Bengi could be in a little bit of trouble here. There's the knock up Arrow trying to do some damage. Wolf coming down to try to save him, but Arrow still gets the kill with a direct hit ultimate. More damage on the bang as well, too. Arrow is just already getting so fed. Yep, this is pretty much the worst possible eventuality <laughs> for SKT is that yeah. the Jugger Maw, the Cog Maw, gets super fed in the early game. And they're taking away another buff. KT playing that same level of lights out League of Legends that we saw them go against Jenner. And the crazy thing is that, for the most part, KT makes very safe moves. They know when they have pressure in the enemy jungle, and it's all Pickaboo and Score who set this up. Marin's still trying to push to this top lane. He's got to do something, but someday pretty powerful at the moment. Taking some decent chip damage, though. All right, so SKT's plan is, okay, well, at least we can win the 1v1 between Nar and Shen. We can maybe hold on to this, and we, we may not fight Dragon, but at least we can get a gold get back even in gold if we start taking some more turrets. Well, speaking of fighting Dragon, it is up right now, and SKT positioning a little bit near the mid lane. They've got to warden the Dragon pit, so they should know when KT starts it. Teleport, though, not up for Marin. Yeah, they just want to draw out. Basically, they want to draw out a TP from Shen so that they can actually do something about this tier two or not. Actually, Marin just walking down into the enemy jungle to take Raptors right now. They know where he is. Wow. Interesting. Well, KT with a good position again around the Dragon Pit. Marin's recalling an award. And SK Telecom, they see that. And they're just going to push up mid lane as well at the same time. Yeah, they really want this mid lane. KT. There we go. Oh, arrow. arrow. Well, very aggressive, man. The Juggermaw is <laughs> here. I guess so. Has that whimsy on him. Yeah, and that pushes SKT right back, man. KT in a great spot to try for this dragon now. Yeah, they released they released Marin from the top lane too. Instead, he just caught a wave in the bottom side and is starting to push that out. So Marin just trying to get gold so he can be tanky enough to deal with the Kog'Maw. Good work. I mean, if they can get, if they can get enough stuns and crowd control under the Kogma to kill him, they can still win this game. And oh, yeah. what they need is Marin to be super tanky in order to follow up on an Annie or a Gragas ult. Okay, Smart. team going for the second dragon. SK Telecom may want to fight this, so they're going to go in. Can they steal it? No, not quite. Arrow takes it with Kogma. Bengi in the bit, waiting for his cooldowns. Looks like he'll get the chance. And Baker's zoning with the ball. He'll be okay. KT playing their comp well. Just take the objective. Oh, tower going down in top lane. Mara not quite there in time to stop it from the minion wave. Just don't go for the engage. A lot of other teams would lose their head in this instance. They would say, all right, they're still here. We can have this engage now that we finish the dragon. But KT knows they just want to get the objectives in height. They have no reason to fight SKT. They can keep getting dragon. If they can keep sieging with the turrets, 
that's that's how they win this game. Yeah. Play smart, force SKT to engage into you, play your comp properly where you kite with the Juggermaw and don't overcommit. Because if you overcommit, if that Kog'Maw gets too far forward, there's enough crowd control in SKT that Kog'Maw dies, and then everyone on KT dies. Well, that's dangerous. That the later this game goes, as they try to go in on Damari, the later this game goes, the higher SKT's chances of coming back are, because all they need to do at that point is win one big team fight. It's true. Uh, it's going to be harder, though, once the Quicksilver Sash and some of these items come down onto the Kog'Maw, as Lulu gets more AP for shields and for whimsy speed. Of course. So, but yes, definitely, SKT, the, the, the danger wow. of running the Juggernaut, is it very strong? Oh, yes. Marin. It's playing so dangerously. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a very strong composition because the damage that Kog'Maw puts out, the the ability for you to poke and siege is really unparalleled with the Bioarcane Barrage range. Yeah. And bang, actually going to drive this minion wave that Marin set up in the bottom side to a tower kill. Yeah, looks like they will get that turret, but KT pushing down the mid lane right now. They know Bang's not there. He's recalling at the moment. He can send a true shot barrage down the mid lane whenever he wants to. Oh, no, he doesn't. He can't. It's on cooldown. Marin is so squishy still. He really can't do anything about this Trinity Force Blade. Yeah. Kog'Maw at the moment. And it's going to give Shen some time to push to a Tier 2. Uh, and that's the scary thing about this Juggermaw comp is with the Shen, they have yet another shield. They have more peel for arrow. And they have the ability to 4-1 split, which is not something that you typically get when you're running a Juggermaw. Yeah, this is like uh, the next level of Juggermaw that gives you that extra split pushing power. Oh, KT pulling back again, just playing it safe. Which with this lead, you definitely do want to do because it is seven kills to zero. That looks like a lot, but it's only a 3K gold lead. SKT could still come back. And if they're going to, it's going to be soon, you know? Uh, it's the Dragons that SKT really has to be concerned about right now because KT will just play a very patient game around the Dragon for as long as SKT allows them to do so. I mean, now that Bengi has the Aegis, you know, now that Faker has a Seraph's Embrace, Bang has a Muramana, you know, they're finally maybe getting some items to contest this. Yeah, it's, it's coming along, but we're not quite there yet. Interesting that Faker is going for the Seraphs here. Of course, there was an AP buff on that, so it is a more attractive option at the moment. Yep. Just has a ton of mana on this Oriana. But again, it's another stacking item. SKT, their decision here. Oh, oh, on to Bang. Bang Arcane shift over the wall. Bangy body slams. Pickaboo goes through. Tries to make a play with that ultimate. Takes a lot of damage in return, though. Oh, but look at all the damage. Coming in on Bang, True Shot Barrage does nothing in return. And they're just going to go on to this red buff. I think this is really interesting from SKT. They picked double tiers as soon as they started losing this game because, of course, Faker went Chalice first. And their answer is, we just need to hold long enough to scale. We're going to pick a bunch of scale, big scaling items. Yeah. Or we're going to try and keep you split up with this bla this uh, black cleaver in the top side. And we just need to wait you out. If we can get to 45 minutes, we're going to have all these scaling items. We're going to be in a better position to deal damage. Can they hold out? They're doing a pretty good job so far. Yeah, they're doing about as good as you could be expected. I mean, I think we'd see a lot of other teams in this situation kind of crumble at this point. And the needle hasn't really moved on that gold lead no. that KT has. It's still at about 3 to 4K. It's not insurmountable by any means. It's just the dragon. That is the big question mark right now, because if SKT can't get a dragon or two, they're still going to be staring down the barrel of that five dragon stack. And that is extremely dangerous. Even well, this next dragon is very important. KT needs that movement speed for their kite comp. Yeah, this next one is definitely one SKT wants to take. They've sent Bang up to the top lane, though, to try to handle this Shen and push back the wave for now. QSS is done. Yep. Oh, going in onto Bengi again. Stun onto score from Wolf. So they're going to avoid the gank there, but that's going to give KT a chance to come in and clear the pink ward, get a little bit more vision down. And with a minute left, Bang's going to have to push this lane quickly and then get back into position for this dragon. Interesting. Distortion enchant onto Someday instead of Home Guard. That, well, he'll have his flash up for more reliable engages to tie up the back line if he needs to, but that is... Makes sense. Yeah, that's a bit different. Well, you don't see a lot of Home Guard Shen engages with Teleport, do you? <laughs> no, you pretty much just want to hit your stand United. Crab walking as fast <laughs> as he can, you know? So I think you do have some flexibility there. 
Well, Peekaboo going for the Righteous Glory on Braum, too. That's going to give them just another option. So yeah. uh, even though their composition doesn't allow for a lot of primary engage, some of these item decisions from KT are going to affect that. Now, Righteous Glory was nerfed in 5.13. Yep, longer cooldown. Yep, less health. Less health. Less health not as important on a, on a support, but the, the cooldown does make a big difference. Yeah, you do have to be a little bit more judicious when you use it. Oh, Wolf may yeah. be caught here. Yeah, well, he's got the stun. He has to use it. That's going to mean maybe a kill here. Pickaboo trying to get away. Jumps over to Nogne. Takes a lot of damage. Has to burn that out. There's a shockwave. Can SKT get him the first kill for SK Telecom? And it goes to Wolf. Why didn't someday ult him? I do not know. That's an excellent question. Maybe they just thought people weren't close enough. Maybe they thought they needed him for the dragon. But SKT, if there was ever a time for a power play, it is now. Yeah, they need this tower down to help them get control over the dragon again. Someday, still not using his ult this game. Nice dodge from Marin on that taunt. They're yeah. not going to be able to get much damage oh out. Marin boy. is low. SKT just left him. Marin having to flash. Faker puts a command protect on him. Is it enough? Doesn't look like it will be. Arrow with another kill. And now KT, are they going to turn and fight? They've taken some damage. SKT in the run. Nice two-man taunt coming in from Someday. And that means potentially more kills for KT. Bang running for his life. But Someday is all over him. Someday with a kill on the Bang. And now they're going to be able to track down Wolf. Presumably take this Dragon disaster for SK Telecom. Marin's positioning has been a really big issue this game. He was trying to get that harassment down, but he really is playing with fire. Yeah. And it keeps on burning him. He's just... He's trying to stay just out of range of KT, and sometimes it looks impressive, but he did misjudge that a bit, and the rest of his team had already started to fade down into the bottom side of the map, and he was still trying to harass, so a lot of overcommitments this game from Marin. Yeah, well, you know what they say, if you play with Sunfire Cape, you're gonna get burned. That's exactly what he's doing this game. Yeah, they were all going for the Dragon down to the Dragon Pit right there to try and get control. Everybody turns around to try and help Marin out, but no, Marin was nowhere near to being Meg Meganar having that survivability. Some bizarre miscommunication for SKT this game. It's, it's not something that we see a whole lot. Well, that really hurts. KT gets that third dragon. That's pretty yeah. much what they needed to prevent. And the dragon stacking continues nine to one. Finally, SKT picks up a kill. It is on to Pickaboo. Not exactly who you want the kills on right now, unless you're me. But it's something. Well. Well. Last Whisper going to be coming in soon. Marin still with only that one armor item. No other armor items to speak of, so it hasn't really slowed Arrow down to go third item QSS this game. Yeah. Wolf still waiting on his own Righteous Glory because Pickaboo is just a whole hell of a lot richer than him. Yeah, those assists will do that. Seraphs is down onto Faker now. So is the uh, Death Caps. So this Oriana really starting to ramp up. Meanwhile, Nogne opting for the... Death Cap into Luden's Echo hmm. for some more poke damage, but otherwise, pretty standard builds here. A little bit surprised by the the tier build on on Faker, but I think under the circumstances, it is somewhat warranted. I'm really curious about how much damage this Lulu is going to be able to do in the late game because Death Cap does give you more percentage AP now, even if the needlessly large rod does a little bit less AP overall. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's. We'll see how, it, see how it goes. I think it's more damage from the death cap than before, though. Uh, it, well, obviously, it just depends yeah. on how many other AP items you have. But yes, at it, this it point, can, it, it can be. be. It can be yeah. So, well, looks like KT really want to maintain some presence as they push down. Look at this coordination. As soon as Arrow hits the turret, that's when Pickaboo and Score move in to cut off that. Uh, entryway in front of the turret so that they get some free auto attacks down. KT just incredibly well coordinated. Yeah. And if they get into trouble in the jungle, Arrow can just walk in easily and vice versa. They can protect him very quickly if they need to as well. And is it time to start baiting Baron, I wonder? They've got the vision right now. Absolutely, and their Juggermaw, they can take it very quickly. Here we yeah. go. There, the ult's oh gonna come boy. in. Arrow going after Bang Bang, taking a lot of damage. Wow, they forced TP, that's huge. Had to flash out of it too. Yeah, Marin teleporting down. Two shot Barrage comes through, doesn't do a lot. SKT still lose that turret. Yep, and they just use the wild growth, make sure that Marin, who is coming in with nearly a full Nar bar and doesn't have that opportunity to get onto them. No point in holding onto it. And now they have TP advantage. Does somebody know that Shen has an ultimate? 
<laughs> I, I don't know, man. I, it doesn't seem like he really feels the need to use it ever. I mean, he has he's only really had one opportunity. Yeah, it's true. He, he, they haven't had to use Shenel because Arrow has never been under threat. Yeah. So that's it's definitely smart to keep that cool down up because if, if the Kog'Maw dies, you will lose the game. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I suppose it is better to lose Pikachu like that. Trying to be cute there with uh, Winter's Bite, but it's not going to work. Yep. And here we are. 5K gold lead. Really hasn't been increased by that much for KT, though. Well, so. it's gone up 2K, which is not a lot. So SK Telecom way down, but still, still hanging in there for now anyway. But yeah. it's kind of on the edge of being a little bit too late. Especially with how tanky Someday is getting. I don't yeah. know if anybody on SKT is actually able to kill him. <laughs> it's kind of unlikely. It's looking pretty good. It's interesting to note that uh, one of the SKT's only losses this season was when Faker was playing Oriana. You know, that's something that I've been thinking for a long time, is that we don't see Faker play Oriana a lot, and it is, of course, you know, of course, like we said before, his most played champ. It's like the classic Faker champ, but lately, you know, in the last couple seasons when he's played it have been some of his worst games, I think, I agree. overall. I agree with you. Yeah. I think that every time he locks it in, but then my brain goes, no, no, it's Faker. He'll be fine. But, but it just continues to be, you know, relatively unimpressive. I feel like it's it's becoming too easy for people to play around the shockwave. It's also because uh, I think that KT got. I think if Faker was against somebody with lower wave clear that he could bully around in lane, it would be different. I expect the Lulu to be banned by SKT next game, and then they'll move from there. See if Faker can get on a more aggressive champion so that they can get that middle tower advantage, which has served them so well. Hard to say if SKT were expecting that Lulu or not, but I would well, guess we probably no. No, we haven't seen Lulu in, in a while in the yeah. lane. And certainly they were not expecting a Juggermaw composition. That is a bit. Right. It makes sense when you think about all the pieces KT's been putting together, but it still is a bit of a surprise. Oh, there's some damage onto Arrow, but gets shielded immediately by Lulu. And KT just positioning around this barrier. Now they're going to go, go in on the score. Score uses a stun. Pickaboo, nice dodge. Score flashes again. Explosive cast brings them right in, though. Bengi, there's a shockwave. They're going to try to turn this one around. No, they decide to just run for it. Bengi, very, very low. Barely lives thanks to that command protect. SKT still wants to maybe duke it out a little bit, but nope. They're going to have to go back. Meanwhile, someday just taking out the tier two and bot. There's nothing they can do. Marin doesn't have TP right now. He had to be there with the rest of the team or else KT just engages on them. So that is a free tier two from KT who is playing this game very patiently. And now they're gonna get another dragon. Yep, it's gonna be dragon number four and there's no chance. Well, SK Telecom stopping them unless they get like a nice two shot barrage. The cooldown's not up. Yep, and they see Gragas in the bottom side clearing out that wave. So now yep. KT knocking on the door of that fifth dragon. Someday he's gonna zone Marin out right here, that'll be a kill for oh score on to dragon number four. Gets slowed by the Glitter Lance in a lot of trouble, even with that command protect. Goes back in, flashes for nice ult. Bengi can do it. Huge shockwave from Faker. Four people caught by this one. This is the moment. This is what SKT has been waiting for. Timbers drop. True Shot Barrage doesn't connect, but they're going to be able to get at least three members. Oh, the explosive cast propelling someday to safety, and they're going to go right for this Baron. That's why you can't overcommit with this composition from KT. Yep. They got what they wanted. They got the dragon. Just play patient and kite. If you wander into a choke point, Baker is there with the shockwave to punish you. And now they're going to lose a Baron for it. So KT, who played so well, so conservatively with the Juggernaut all game, overcommits is punished, and that means a dragon and a new lease on life for SK Telecom. You know, we talked about this about, what, 25 minutes ago, that all SKT needs is one situation like this, and this could be a big comeback. Watch, what a play from Marin right into the shockwave from Faker. Oh, man. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, never mind what we just said about Faker's Oriana. <laughs> they have so much CC. You have to be incredibly cautious about making plays like that. KT yeah. forgetting their win conditions for a moment and just overcommitting. They 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 had every 
opportunity to win this game. Just wait another six minutes, get that fifth dragon, and then basically you have an unstoppable siege. Once that minion and turret damage is, is doubled with the Juggermaw, no one can get into range of Kogma or hit him with anything because of his speed. He's just going to melt towers and win you the game. Right. And now with this, SK Telecom immediately striking out on the map, getting a lot of wards down, pushing those waves. And KT has to find a new way to respond to this. Obviously, KT still has a huge advantage here. Uh, even though that gold gap has been closed, if they play around the fifth dragon, because SKT will not have the Baron buff to that objective, right. they still can just win off of dragon stacking. But it has been delayed. They are a little bit more vulnerable right now. They've let SKT back in in terms of itemization. It's about that edge, you know? SK Telecom, it just feels so hard to count them out no matter what the situation is. And KT, after losing a fight like that, they've got to be a little bit shaken. They need to get it together. Arrow with the red buff certainly does help a little bit, and they've still got that great wave clear. Even yeah. against the Baron. I mean, with this big mana build with the Seraphs, I mean, Faker has 700 AP wow. already, and it's not even six item yet, so. You know, by the time Baker completes his last item, now I don't know what that's going to be, but he should be somewhere in the probably close to 900 AP range, and Orianna does a lot of damage. Yeah. Well, it looks like they're going to be able to take this tier two in mid here. Yeah, KT with no ability to stop. This is just too dangerous. Wow, and SK Telecom really coming back. Only one turret behind now. Only 1,000 gold behind as well. I'm honestly surprised. I thought, I really thought it was over. Well, it could have been, Doa. It was very close to being over. It could have been, but... Very, very, very <laughs> small mistake from KT. You have to admire the, the poise from SK Telecom, though, to just say, okay, to gracefully lose that early game and just say, we need to just lengthen this game out. Yeah. We need to just build some big stacking items and try and use wave clear and split push pressure with the Black Cleaver to not just straight up die here. But I think KT could have also played it more aggressively. I think they didn't really use the Shen ult to its fullest potential. I think KT is a bit nervous, a bit scared to be playing against SKT, so they're not, they did not snowball perhaps as hard as they could have. So Faker picks up the needlessly large rod. I wonder, I do wonder what that's gonna be turned into. There's some interesting new options with 513. Oh, taunt on to Marin. And they're going to try to make a play out of this. Marin just hopping away and not going to be a catch, it looks like. Dragon up in a minute 45. It is so crucial that SKT takes this dragon. They cannot let KT get the fifth. Yep, but Baron buff is down, so they don't really have any good way to push into these towers at this stage. Score is there, just trying to stick by the tier two, at least for the minute. Well, KT did a very good job of warding up their bottom jungle as they were pushed back as well, too. So they're pretty well situated to contest this dragon as well. They have the vision control, that's true. And so they're not going to be afraid of Bengi, uh -oh. for example. Oh, got to be careful. He popped back over that wall. Ooh, that yeah, that was a glitch. dangerous situation, <laughs> yeah. Hate it when we see that one. I haven't seen that one for a while. I haven't seen that since MSI. Yeah, that's the last time I remember. Fortunately, Bengi it. didn't die. Yeah, that was a very close call. SKT gonna push this bottom tier two. Score's gonna come from the side for a flank. And can they stop it? Looks like they can for now. Arrow is so terrifying at the moment. And he's so damn fast too. Has Alacrity Enchant on the boots. Yeah. So Marin is here someday. Locked underneath his turret, Marin really just wants to get some of this tower HP down, but someday is insanely tanky. Dragon in 30 seconds now. This is the big moment of the game. SKT, if they don't stop KT from getting this dragon, it is over. No way they can stop them. Shockwave brings in a couple people. There's a commitment. SKT comes in. Wolf gets knocked up. Score very, very low. Pickaboo has to flash away. And SKT backing off. Teleport coming down for Marin. Someday used his ultimate to join the fight. Bang trying to do some damage, nearly gets picked off. Poking from the side someday, isolated just a bit, but he's so tanky. SKT forcing KT away from the Dragon. Bang gets very low though. Arrow tries to make a play, but eats a big mystic shot. All right, Rek'Sai wants to come back in. Someday is chunked out, he has TP. So close, SKT, they're going for this Dragon. They Rek'Sai need to ult. take it, they need to take it. 
Bengi comes in to try to zone. SKT turns. They go back under the dragon. Now they get it. KT steals the dragon away. They've got all five. And now SKT is in big trouble. Score coming from the side. And Arrow is literally an unstoppable juggernaut as they finish off SK Telecom. Wow, Bengi left the dragon pit to try and zone out Score. Score got into the pit within smite range and actually just took it out while the rest of KT tied Bengi up. Risky play did not pay off for SK Telecom. And you now know. these are long death timers. This is going to be a win for KT Rolster. This is going to be the end of SK Telecom's 17-game win streak. Yeah, and what a way to break it, too. KT with a nearly flawless game number one here. Just that one mistake to give SKT a glimmer of hope, but then snatching it right back away again. GG, KT takes game one. That was a very impressive game game by KT Dillon. Like you said, they did make that one mistake and they were nearly brutally punished for it. That's the danger of playing against SK Telecom. Yep. You can play a great game of League of Legends for 37 minutes, but you make that one error and sometimes they can punish you for it. Taking a look at this right now, uh, Bang did get chunked out on the outside. By Arrow did get away though, right as the dragon spawned. Uh, dealt some poke in return. I'm trying to see what happened actually with this replay, which I'm sure no doubt you guys will be seeing soon. Yeah, at some point. It's also worth noting that this season, this is only their third game loss, but it is their first loss in the first game of a series. That's when they right. lost against Samsung and they lost against um, Anarchy, one could say maybe they took their foot off the gas a little bit because they were already up 1-0. They had that safety net. Well, there's no net now, Doa. <laughs> That's right, it is win or have that streak that has gone on for months broken. So Rumble, Maokai, the bands from KT, trying to attack Marin's champion pool, which is wise. You see how poorly he played on that Gnar in the last game. Did have a good ult that got them the Baron, but beyond that was playing much too aggressive. And now you take away Rumble, the champion he's famous for, Maokai, the champion on which he's 23 and one. And they take away the Corky, the champion on which Bang is 26 and one. So they're trying to deny the and one composition from SK Telecom. The John is left, but that's less of a threat. Yeah. What's the final ban going to be? They really need to do something to deny this Juggernaut comp. They can't let that happen again. Well, what are you going to do? I mean, Lulu? last game, well, but now Victor, Thresh, and Azir are all Cogma. still up. And the okay. Kog'Maw, all right. Well, Lulu mid is far more dangerous with Kog'Maw than it is with most of their other champions. So they're going yeah. to take away the Gragas, actually, for Score, a champion that, honestly, Score hasn't really favored. It's interesting. It's, it, it is a little bit surprising to me, the amount of priority on Gragas in this particular matchup with these two junglers. I mean, here's the thing about Gragas. He's the whole package jungler. He can play aggressive early. He's super tanky late. He has damage percent damage reduction. He can engage. He can disengage. There's really nothing that Gragas can't do. Yeah. Well, except for uh, maybe ballet. Or damage. That's but right. You don't need your jungler to do damage. Sadly. Sadly, no. Well, there it is. Evelyn picked up for Benki. They know there's not going to be a Rek'Sai on the other side spotting him. And Marin going with that Gnar yet again. Interesting. So Marin feels safest against someday on this Gnar. It's a match. It's a, it's just a later that you can really bully people with. You can chip towers with and start to get control over the oh map. Oh boy. And Pickaboo gets his Thresh too. Shen and Thresh. Now remember last game, even though Someday was pretty far ahead in terms of kills, Bard was still able to put the pressure down onto the Shen. Yeah. So it's going to be up to KT I mean, to help Someday out in that lane. If Marin hadn't had some of those silly deaths early on, that could have gone very, very differently. I think that was a, a big part of things too. All right, they can take the Ezreal here. Yeah, I, I, you're right, absolutely. Uh, if he had not died so much that maybe he could have gotten even more ahead in that lane. So I think it's still a good pick for SKT. You say, hey, Marin, dial yeah. it back a little bit. Now they can take die the Ezreal. dire. <laughs> they can take the Ezreal here, clearly, and then hide their, their last pick. So now they're going to force KT to show something that can be used against Runeclay of Ezreal because they don't have the luxury of last pick this game. Yeah, no Braum this time around with that Thresh already grabbed, and it looks like it will be the Alistar for Wolf. So, nice position for SK Telecom, being able to use that Ezreal as a flex pick. I think you take Victor here, if you are KT. 
you take you take the victor, you try and push the Ezreal in early and punish the pick. Please no Draven <laughs> arrow. Well, if you think that it's going to be Sivir, maybe. I don't know. Vayne is very strong here, actually. They've got good pick potential. They have a way to break up the team fight with the Gragas ultimate into those duels. They've got great Shen shields to peel for the Vayne. They could go Jugger Vayne. This is interesting, but it's definitely doable. It's hyper carry, but it's a much shorter range hyper carry. They are going to be very dependent on good grog assaults if they pick this composition because that's their sole method of engage here. Now, do you think this keeps the Ezreal in the mid lane for SK Telecom? Yes, I do. And what it'll be for uh, Bang? Twitch. Whoa, Twitch for Arrow. Interesting. So, Jugger Twitch, I guess it's going to be it. Now, we've seen some attempts at Twitch this year, mostly from OQ. Huh. They have not been very effective. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Twi True. but Twitch and Thresh do have a very high chance of killing people in the laning phase. You can all in with that duo. You can still sneak around the map. Now the vein is going to be taken wow. all right. by SK Telecom. Wow, this is so risky from SKT. The reason why, they don't have really good wave clear here, especially early on, and Nagne is going to be able to push Faker in yeah. early in this game. This is the first time Faker is going to be playing Runeglaive Ezreal in competitive play. We've been waiting for this. Now, once he gets the Runeglaive and, and the ultimate, he's going to be able to make up for some of Vayne's lack of wave clear by using True Shot Barrage on the other lanes. And they want some kill pressure, of course, with Alistair and Vayne. That twitch with limited mobility could get knocked around and killed very quickly in the bottom side. I think Bang is just trying to add another champion to his grand pentakill tour this season. Seeing if we can pick one up with Vayne. We'll see, though. So both teams are relying on one person for engage. That person is Wolf on SKT, and it's Score on KT Rolster. I don't know if I really like... I like their composition better with the Vayne, just because when you Grog Assault, it's kind of anti-synergistic to the Twitch ultimate, the spray yeah, and course. pray. Yeah. So I'm not sure how much I like that, but again, Twitch is a strong duelist, so he's still going to be useful. It's not terrible. I just prefer the Vayne. Well, we'll see if it's enough. As we go into game number two, SK Telecom for the first time in a very long time, down a game in a series. And if they don't win it right here, if they don't tie things up, their match streak is over. Let's get in the game and see if KT can take the 2-0 or if we're going to game three. K Telecom versus KT Rolster here on Champion Summer. KT up one game after a pretty masterfully played Juggermaw composition. SK Telecom with a couple missteps here and there, especially in the top lane. We'll see if they've tightened things up as we go into game number two. You really got to see the comeback potential of SKT, though, even though they did yeah. fall behind by a significant number of kills. They kept things dangerous certainly did get scary for KT uh, at that moment when SK Telecom got the Baron away some early warning yeah. nobody wants twitch to pop out of a brush at level one and be annoying we're going to see a lane swap from KT here looks like we're going to see a lane swap from SKT actually yeah interestingly enough so don't want to be in that lane too early so well, that vein should be just fine by yourself in the top lane for a while the main worry here, KT has to take a big lead early. They have to really do some good work in the early game uh, because their Faker basically has no threat from KT's composition. They don't have targeted CC. It's going to be really difficult to actually catch Ezreal out with a Grog Assault, so he's going to be able to clean up a lot of these fights forever. And that's not a good thing. You don't want to play against Runeglaive Ezreal without a reliable form of locking that Ezreal down. And not really. That is something KT lasts. So as long as KT doesn't suffer too many tower losses early, I think they have a very good chance of winning this game. Fans from Texas there. Coming all this way to watch Faker. And why wouldn't you? The real question is, why haven't all these people on stream come that far to watch Faker? Yeah, no kidding. What are you doing with your lives? It's really fun. Get out here. 
Oh, play from Peekaboo. He's trying to be very annoying at this blue buff. And there are three succeeding. people there. He needs to be super careful. Yep, there's a flash pulverize. Peekaboo in a little bit of trouble. He flashes. The exhaust still slowing him down a little bit. So, flash for flash, although the exhaust used by Wolves. So yeah. SK Telecom using a bit more. Yeah, actually did get the better end of that trade in the end. So. I guess so, wow. Huh. Yeah, I'm surprised about that exhaust, or at least I'm surprised the exhaust didn't come down after the flash if he was still in range, you know? Yeah. Seems like generally you wait for that, but Wolf impatient for those kills this game. Well, Wolf showed up really big in their last game in his last game on Alistair. Yeah. Against the Ku Tigers. Nice. But yeah, as long as as long as Faker doesn't lose the mid tower super early, because the big danger. Oh wow! Wow! Okay. Pickaboo. That's a lot of damage. Wolf in a little bit of trouble too. He has no flash. Oh, if Pickaboo would hit that flay, that would have been an easy kill for KT. Either way, they force Marn out of lane early. Yep, they're gonna get his TP too. Yep. As a result of that play, so. Yeah, this is the big question right now, because if they can get the mid tower down early with the Lulu, then maybe Faker will have to overextend where Arrow can just pop up behind him and kill him. Mm. But Arrow is going to have to be super sneaky this game to actually kill Faker. Well, who knows what he can do on this Twitch. We have not seen anyone really succeed on it this season yet, but. And we've never seen Twitch played in this kind of composition in Korea either. Very interesting running pretty much the same style of comp that they did last time with the Shen, Lulu, and then a Hyper Carry. Yeah, things have been, things have been very different today. KT certainly has come prepared. They're playing, they've been playing really well lately, obviously, but bringing some stuff that I don't think anyone was expecting today. Oh, Marin just taking even more damage. Wolf has to use this combo. They are just really making it tough for Marin to CS. He's actually not doing too bad, though, when you look at it, but he's burning a lot of health with it. Well, and the thing is, too, that as long as they have Marin in this dual lane, somebody's going to have that level and experience advantage over him. So that is quite problematic. Yeah. Uh, because he does have the ability just to ult immediately as he hits six and try and make a play somewhere else on the map if they want to give up perhaps a turret or some damage on the turret at the very least to Vayne and top. I'll score wondering if he can make a play here onto Bang. Might be kind of tough though. We'll see. All right, KD. this is a really strong CC combo of Gragas and Shen. Yeah, Bang has got to be a little bit worried here. He's got no wards, but it looks like score is not even going to go for it. Yep, Faker holding his own nearly to that true shot barrage right now. Yeah. Oh, Bangy coming down. And Pikachu and Arrow are pushed really far up. Oh, are they going to be able to make really a play here? Risky. It's only level four. They're going to go on to Pikachu. There's a flay, a little bit of damage. And the Lantern makes sure Arrow gets away just fine. And that's where you wish, if you're Wolf, that you still had your flash up. Yep. Pretty much. Couldn't get in range for that. Headbutt pulverize. Score looking to come back in again, maybe. This time he's going for it. Bang could be in a little bit of trouble. Moving up even farther. Tumbles away now. Condemns someday back, but knocked against the wall by score. Bang slowed down. Flashes to dodge that taunt, and he will be able to make it out of there alive. Meanwhile, Pikaboo very, very low. Shields himself. There's the summoner heal as well, and he'll be able to make it out. Man, close calls. Multiple lanes. Yeah, Bang having to use the summoner spell. Meanwhile, heal. Blown in the bottom side. Pickaboo took a little bit of a dangerous route toward the dragon. Oh, here we go. Nagne, two shot oh, Raj, geez. chunks him pretty heavily. He's going to wild, wild growth himself right away. There's the exhaust coming down from Wolf, and that's going to be first blood for SKT as soon as Faker hits one last auto. There we go. First blood for SK Telecom. Faker picks it up. It was close. Nagne, maybe with a chance of getting away if he had just kind of ran for it, but. Baker had that last auto. Well, you have to be very worried about Wolf affecting the mid lane, and now that Faker's ahead, I don't know if KT is going to be able to come back from this because well, Faker, Faker had on Runeglaive Ezreal. Think about that one. We know how good of an Ezreal player Faker is. We know that his Ezreal is renowned for having this massive effect on the rest of the map. And he gets that Trailblazer. So going for the early wave clear here. That makes sense against uh, Lulu. To sustain too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. In case he gets poked, he'll have that extra little bit of healing and mana. Yep. A level six for someday now. So he can come in and try to make a difference here. 
I wonder if he had level six when that gank come in, came in in mid. I do. Hmm. I don't know if he did actually. For for the to give someday the benefit of doubt of the doubt, we'll assume he didn't. <laughs> Otherwise, I it think was, that would have been a pretty good time to use it. It was very close to when Faker hit six. Yeah. So. It's very well timed by SKT. Here we go. Oh. Tries to steal the blue buff. Doesn't get it. Yep. They had a ward placed there, so they knew the approximate timing, but wasn't quite enough. So we're going to get chunked, though. And Faker just happily sitting in the mid lane. Bengi going to come by. They want to get some wards into the bottom side jungle and Faker just playing to that side of the map right now so they can oh no wards going down just peeking in yeah interesting ah oh, well no wards for Bengi or uh, Wolf really at this point gotta go back and buy trying to use that essence flux as some grass over the minion wave yep uh, he's gonna be pushed in eventually yeah. here. Once those minions group up under turret, though, you just hit it with a trailblazer smite, and that'll clear the wave pretty quickly. Indeed it will. Meanwhile, Bang rotating back down to the bottom lane. And KT. Who's going to get this first dragon? I wonder. Well, the longer it gets delayed for SKT, the happier they're going to be. Yeah. Don't fight with this... Ezreal early, they don't have a lot of combat stats between the two Trailblazers from SK Telecom right now. Shot Barrage, uh, <laughs> Scorch just cannot avoid being hit by that two shot Barrage. Nice check though, onto the brush. Yep. And they, now they know that score is there, so that's some very valuable information about where the enemy jungler is for the lanes. Marin, a little bit behind now that we're seeing them swap back into standard lanes. But not still, by a lot yet. Yeah, still doing some nice harass on us someday. Someday fortunate that he was able to pick up some armor before he actually got into the 1v1. Bang, lands the stun onto Pickaboo, but there is no follow up. Yeah, knew that poison was coming in from Arrow, so he was able to sidestep that without too much trouble. Faker lurking in the brush. Nice CS lead over Nagne as well, too. Well. Nagne hasn't been able to have that same effect this game. Yep. Amara needs to be careful here. He has no flash. Backing away, taking a lot of damage from this Shen already. Marin did die 1v1 to someday Shen last game. Yeah, he does have to be very cautious, and he doesn't have really anything right now to help deal with this Shen. No, just the Kindle gem. Trying to go for... Uh-oh. I think if Marin doesn't back off right now, he's in huge trouble. They've got a ward there. Score knows. Score could still dive. Yep. Score knows that everybody knows he's there, but he's still just going to oh. sit in this brush. There's Bengi. Bengi going to see him. Just try and chase him off. Yep. Does yeah. have a warrior enchant compared to just a sight stone, so Score can't fight that battle. Well, nice chunking of Score with those hate spikes. Bengi does uh, very, very well. Uh-oh, Wolf could be in a little bit of trouble. Pushes Nagne away, doesn't want to get grabbed with that death sentence. Oh, gets grabbed anyway. Faker trying to support his support here. Gets flayed in, poked a bit, but Alisar already pretty tanky, so not a lot to worry about. Faker coming down, scores here. Now he's got to be careful he doesn't get bounced back by the explosive cask. Although he's still got flash, he's okay. Yeah, this, this Ezreal though, I... I fear may have gotten too much of an advantage already in this game because KT had to keep him down early and try and get it then because they just don't have an answer to Runeglaive Ezreal with this composition late. Marin has his flash. Is he going to try to make a plan to someday here? Trying to play it coy, and there's the ultimate thrown against the wall. They get the stun. The double stun comes in. Bengi follows with that Agni's embrace. Going to try to taunt away, and they get the flash at least. But someday is still sticking around in lane for now. See if they go for a repeat gank here, whether someday's gonna try and play a little bit more reserved. Yeah, they could so try. It doesn't happen. I mean, they, they don't have their ults any longer, so it would be hard. But they're just gonna actually TP right back into the top side. They're going for the follow-up gank, but someday we'll have none of it. Yeah, he knows something's up. He knows it's too dangerous to stick around and push that lane anymore. Bang so, and Wolf pushing up bot pretty hard. It's Black Cleaver again. Now, in this huh. game, that I think that's very much a good idea. 
Uh, you Again, you really just want to extend the laning phase to get this Ezreal online, but KT finds an opportunity to take the mid lane turret. This is exactly what they need. Wow, and so that wave clear, that pushing power from Nagne's Lulu is enough. Flash, explosive cast onto Faker, but he gets back into turret. Bengi is right there. Score and Nagne need to be a little bit careful, but nobody else from SK Telecom is around. All right, but they got Faker's Flash too, so definitely yeah. worth using your jungler's Flash on that. And uh -oh. here we go. Shen coming down, Bang already on the disengage. Wolf slowing him up. There's a Flash play from Peekaboo. Bang still there, walks right through the box, tumbling around, exhausted, getting very, very low. Someday dives for it, gets the kill for Arrow, and they're gonna get him out on the Lantern. KT with a successful gank in bot, but in response, Marin takes that top lane turret. Right, that was a big Big investment on that. Now KT can make another play because since they use Shenel, they still have teleport advantage here. So if they want to do something else, they absolutely can. Nice play under the bottom side, but it comes with a price. Arrow, ah, the old submarine. <laughs> That's right. Shen, invisible Shen coming in for once a sneaky ninja. Nice flash play from Pickaboo as well as with that box. Bang accidentally tumbling through the corner of that, it looked like. Yeah, and this is why, for the rest of the game, SKT has to be very on point with their pink warding to prevent that from happening. Because if that happens on a Faker, it's going to be a really rough team fight afterwards. So, KT get a kill, they get that mid lane turret, but they lose something in response. And now the Black Cleaver is going to be doing work as SKT make their way down to the bottom side. There's no vision from KT Roll, so they had to back off after that kill, so a free dragon for SK Telecom. That's really big, too, because after getting exactly zero dragons in game number one, getting the first one here is certainly nice. It's a morale boost, anyway. So now they're going to use Nara on the bottom side, since that's the closest tower, to see if they can actually get some decent damage down onto that objective. Someday pushing up, SKT looking to respond, but there are a million wards in their top side. Now that bottom turret's gonna take a lot of damage before Arrow gets there too. Marin getting some serious work done. So the question is, for KT, now we have the, the timing where Arrow has the Blade of the Ruin King. This is where he can really start to affect the map. Faker has to play super far forward now that his tower's down. Can Arrow get a kill onto Faker? Maybe. Faker, still no flash. Score coming in, takes some turret hits. They're gonna try to slow him. Faker just arcane chips away. Oh, the Agnes Embrace comes out. Pickaboo gets picked off by that true shot barrage. Nice bait, actually, bringing him right into the clutches of Bengi and SKT. Not done quite yet. Here comes Marin up from the bottom line. Faker with more damage on the Nagne. Nice headbutt pulverize. Another kill for Faker, and SKT has really got the ball rolling now. And KT, they had the right idea there, but the execution was off. Faker able to easily get out of that gank. Yeah. And because KT committed so far down that lane, they were trying to cut Faker off from behind. They just couldn't finish the kill. And frankly, you need Arrow to help with that. He is the one who needs to be getting those kills onto Faker early. He's got the CC and the damage to do it. Wow, and are they gonna get this mid lane turret right here? It doesn't look like it, Pickaboo. Narrowly missing another death sentence there. Good job of clearing out those wards immediately, but SKT is going to take quite a vision edge. So Bengi can actually gank very efficiently for Marin right now. That Black Cleaver going to help out this Evelyn a lot with the Warrior Enchant. So they actually have a lot of kill pressure, surprisingly. So I wonder what Faker's first item after Runeglaive is going to be with that Ludens not procking off of the Q anymore. Thank you trying to defend his pink ward for now. I mean, it's still good. Yeah. yeah there are many other ways to proc it, like W. True shot Barrage or W, yeah. <laughs> True. And yeah, Faker's poke is starting to get a little bit crazy already. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if KT can really do much. They they got, they caught a break by taking down that tier one in the mid lane, but then they misplayed it because Arrow just has to be there in the mid game to actually make picks. Yeah. He can't just sit in lane right now. He needs to get kills. Well, this turn in a lot of trouble. Wolf actually getting grabbed, played in as well with score there in the box. They might be able to grab something. Nice explosive cask. Brings him right into a pulverize though. Marin here to defend, and man, Alistar. Alistar's a pretty tanky champion, man. He is, but they get him <laughs> off the tower. It's only gonna be worth blowing all those ultimates if they can actually kill the turret afterward. 
Uh, it looks like they can. I don't think there's another wave for a while. And that turret with no health. Marn about to go Meganar, but not quite soon enough to save the bottom tier one. It's another one of those situations, though, where you wonder if Someday had ulted, would they have been able to dive far enough to secure that kill? I mean, yeah, Someday's only used, like, one Shen ult in this, in this series so far. They... They probably didn't know where Evelyn was, which is what I would suspect is the reason why they didn't want to go for that. Oh, it is going to be a Ludens. Okay. Purple rain, you know how it is. That's right. Hey, man. It's Prince's favorite I lived favorite in Minnesota item. for a long time. I know, I know all about Prince. <laughs> you know all about Purple Rain? I haven't seen the movie, though. Oh, Nagne, Wild Growth himself. And he's going to be able to live for now, but Faker's still poking quite heavily with that Q. There's the Exhaust. They're going to try to flash for a play, but Bang is right there. Condemning away Wolf with the body to block all the shots. Score coming back, and this is a bit of a messy fight for KT. Bengi gets grabbed, but SKT will be able to continue pushing, and Faker with the kill onto Sunday. Oh boy, it's the Faker show. Well, there's no one to kill Faker. Basically, if that pick fails, Faker can do whatever the hell he wants because there is no more threat. They knew the explosive cast was down. There wasn't, he could just keep doing oh, this. Man. There is nothing to stop him, which is why KT's composition is questionable against this room blade vest. They wow. had two turrets. KT, they had to get kills on Faker with arrows twitch. That is how they win this game. They roam to the mid lane, they get the kills early, or never. Basically. Uh, I'm gonna vote never at this point. Yeah, Faker 4 0 0 on this Runeglaive Ezreal. Dragging up in a minute, and SK Telecom with a great set of wards down to make sure that they can take that as well. Marin should be able to finish off this bot lane turret. Yeah. Someday. <laughs> Someday. Eventually. Oh. Purple rain. Purple rain. All I remember about that movie, a little bit of I, a little bit of it I saw is Prince riding a motorcycle. I think we need Jar motorcycle. I think we need Jarvin to build that item so he can he can be the prince with the purple rain. <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> Luden's Jarvin, why not? Sounds like a Chobra build to me, doesn't it? Yeah. Just uh, purple rain with his E throws down the, the banner. We need like a the purple. Cataclysm. We need a purple rain corky skin. You know where he's like just ri riding the big motorcycle <laughs> instead of like a, a plane. That'd be awesome. I would love that. <laughs> That's right. You would say things like purify yourselves in the waters of Lake Minnetonka. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be great. Would be. Would be fantastic. Well. That's KT with a lot of positioning over this dragon right now, but KT with a good amount of wards too. This one is up for contest. Ooh, interesting. Faker actually has a QSS early. He knows that as long as he can escape the initial little CC burst from yeah. KT, that he's just going to be able to clean up fights. It's a very smart itemization in this particular situation. He knows he has the damage, and he has a lot of extra money because he's, what, 60 CS up and has four kills. I don't know if there's anything that's going to stop Faker now. I think it's too late to stop Faker. I think so. Oh, arrow coming in. Here we go. Super secret Shen. Baron or Dragon still goes to SKT. Shen gets in the middle of everybody, but he's on his own. Death sentence on Marn. That's not the one you want to hook. Pickaboo in a lot of trouble. Marn with a kill there. Exhaust on the arrow. Gets wild growth, but that leaves Nagne vulnerable. Arrow still getting very low. And how far does SKT want to push this? Faker can just chase this all day, though, man. Here's yep, a QSS, there the Oh, the minion. Rain. <laughs> Marn coming in, ultimate throws something near the wall, but Nagne gets locked up under his own turret. Looks like they might get Wolf. Now he's going to get away. What am I talking about? He's Alistar. There's another kill. So SKT, let's recap. Bunch of kills, dragon, turret. Things going pretty well. Red SK buff. Telecom. Red buff. The game. Yeah, I, with this kind of lead, with the room play best, really. This is one of the reasons why, in the current meta, on blue side, you have to draft or ban as you have to draft against or ban the Runeblade Ezreal. So Bang gets caught out right here, but Arrow can't do enough damage, is condemned into the wall. Marin eats the hook for Faker, and now it's just, it's not even hard for Faker to do nope. anything right now because no one can actually kill him. He just keeps on Arcane shifting forward, getting those Runeglaive procs off, uses his QSS to clear the slow. And then just walks on through the turret. Nagne has a shield, but it's not enough in the end as Bang gets the kill and takes out the turret right afterwards. And it's nice to play the vein with the Runeglaive Ezreal too because you get an attack speed bonus off of the Essence Flux. Yeah, that's right. 
Huh. Not exactly high synergy when it comes to CG. That's but certainly a nice little side bonus. Yeah, I mean, it's all right. Certainly it's going to cut through the Shen, which is something that SKT had problems with in the last game. Well, they're certainly not having any problems doing it now. But anyway, as I was saying, this is why when you're playing blue side in the current meta, you either have to ban the Ezreal or, or you have to have a plan about how you're going to deal with the Ezreal. You have to take some picks. And in this last game, we saw KT ban the Maokai, one of the prime ways to shut down an AP Ezreal. Same with Rumble, actually. Yeah. Because you can zone him out of a fight with Equalizer and at least do enough burst. Oh, boy. Nagne, goodbye. Wow. That nice. lantern just illuminated his death. Wolf's mechanics with the flash pulverized headbutt, or flash headbutt pulverized combo, have been so on point. That is a... That is a combo that if you mess up, you invest five minute cooldown timers in and you have to be on point and nail it. And he has the last couple of weeks. He just does not miss this stuff. All right, they're going to go for Baron. They're going to turn on to Someday. Back on to Baron again. What can Pickaboo do? Coming in, Arrow sneaking around. That cooldown's going to be gone for a little while. Score maybe come from the other side. SKT turns. They know they've got KT split up. Two shot Braun takes oh. a big chunk out of both of those guys. Nice ult. Oh no! Baron misses him with the Nar ult though. And Arrow still kiting backwards, but it's a 1v5 now, and he is dead. Score comes in just to get the kill on the bang, but that is going to mean a near ace. Nagne alive only because he died earlier, and they are <laughs> going to just go for the Baron anyway. Yeah, SKT, instant turn off of that Baron. They knew exactly what they wanted to do. No problem actually executing the kill, and now they will get a Baron 100%. Yep, sadly, the Vayne will not have the buff but they will be able to just barely get it with some good aggro management. Let's watch that fight again. I mean, Faker, look at this. He actually sees the lantern and then hits them both because he knows that Arrow's going to take it to Pickaboo because uh, basically Arrow couldn't see Faker right there. I think Bang condemned Arrow mid-lantern ride, so it pushed him and stunned him against the wall at the end. Yeah. That was sick. Nicely done. Well... KT, I admire your ingenuity with this Twitch, but you, they didn't actually execute in the timing that they had to try and punish Faker, and now the Twitch pick looking pretty silly. Yeah. Yeah, it's not working at all. I mean, to Arrow's credit, he's got a, a decent stat line, but that's because he can just be invisible and run away if things get bad. Yeah, he still doesn't even have uh, his Ghost Blade either yeah and two qss's on sk telecom so that is going to really eliminate someday from doing much of anything uh oh score that makes it out on the lantern so he'll be okay but sk telecom starting to push ahead with that baron meanwhile top turret goes down in favor of kt rolster death gap is done for faker now that's a lot of damage yep nice just push it up zone people off the turret while bang pushes so you can go ahead and take another tier two. Very smooth turret control from SK Telecom. As they slide down into the bottom side of the map. Yeah, Bang's still with no uh, static shiv, but I'd imagine he'd be able to get it after they finish this push. He's very close to it. And SKT will just continue pushing. Yes, they will. Nothing will stop them now. Faker has a 100% kill contribution score this game. Wow. Yeah, and this turret's going to be He has a 5,000 gold lead over <laughs> Nagne. It's probably one of the biggest we've seen in the mid lane in quite a while. Especially at 26 minutes. Yeah. They got a lot of kills. Well fed. There go the minions. They're going to try to keep pushing for this inhibitor. And it looks like they're going to get it. No problems at all. And at this point, if you're KT, you know, what do you do? There's, there's not much. Well, their draft wasn't quite as clever this game as it was last game, Doa. I mean, even at their worst, SK Telecom was only about 5,000 gold down, and you compare that to now a 13,000 gold lead for SKT over KT in game number two here. Yep, easily going to get the third Dragon 2, which is only going to belabor KT's problems, considering that they already can't kill Faker because he's too slippery, yep. and they don't have the tools to do so. Pretty much. 
And now it should be all, all clean up for SK Telecom here in game two. Yep, they have all of the outer turrets and the inner turrets, and now with that inhibitor down, they can go ahead and wait this game out. There's no pressure for them to finish in a timely fashion. Yep, that's right. Any more kills are just icing on the cake at this point. Icing on the stat cake. The old stat cake, my favorite. That's right. Cake of statistics. Faker can't be bothered to take one jungle camp at a time. <laughs> Gotta go for all of them simultaneously. That's right. It's good to go for the Gromp, but if you go for you can go for so much more. Oh, Bang with a 2k gold lead over Arrow, too, so it's pretty big. 2k gold lead for Marin up in top, who's had a, a much better, much less dying-filled game, too. Yes, he has. Marin got his head on straight and actually was able to control the tempo of the top lane with that Black Cleaver this game. Yep. All right, hook on Marin again. Not the person exactly that you want to bring closer to your team. Everybody dodges two-shot barrage, but that's going to let SK Telecom come in and take out this turret. Wow, and Nagne getting very, very low. Marin comes in, doesn't use the ultimate. They're going to try something. Peekaboo, whoa, he tried to make a play or something. I'm not sure. And now Arrow, very, very low as well. Faker manages to QSS that grab. That could have been dangerous, but a double kill for Bang already. Scoring a lot of trouble. Bang comes in, or Bengi comes in for that kill. And this one, this one, guys, is over. Yeah, Super Minions in the bottom side. Gonna hit those Nexus turrets very soon. Yep. So SK Telecom rebounds one lopsided game, but they decisively take this one in under 30 minutes. Wow, yeah, and at 29 minutes nearly exactly, SKT takes a resounding game two win. We are all tied up, GG. Much better played by SK Telecom this game. KT gave them some few, a few troubles early, but I think they didn't execute with the Twitch properly. It was a risky pick that needed a very small timing window to be successful to work. Didn't work. Faker got super fed on Runeblade Bezreal, and that's about all you can ask for on that champion. Yeah, well, some creative plans again, you know, from KT coming in in game number yeah. two. You wonder what they have in store for game three. I, you know, I like that. It is good if Faker plays Rune Glaze as Ezra. We're, we're going to allow it. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Bad idea. Well, picks and bans for our final game in our first best of three of the night. KT over on the blue side, SKT on the red side, as we mentioned. And Rumble and Rise going to be the first two bans. So, similar bans to last game. The Rumble, not so much of a surprise. There's the Ezreal. Yeah. He's taking it out for the Maokai. I think that's smart. Or the Corky. Something they had banned out on the blue side last game. Callista. Now, will the last ban for SK Telecom be Kog'Ma? Yeah, I wonder. I, I still like. I still feel like you need to avoid the Juggermaw. You can't let KT have that yeah. again. I think, I think you ban the Kog'Ma. I think if you're KT, you ban the Maokai instead of the Corky. And then we move from there. Ooh. Alistar. Well... Wolf did make a lot of plays as he usually does on that champion. Yeah. Alistair fell all the way through picks and bans in the first match. Yeah, there's a Kog'Maw ban from SKT, so just playing it safe. And oh, it'll no. be that Corky first pick. That's a bit uh, that's a bit of a risk, to say the least. Arrow is also just not a good Corky player. That's <laughs> just true. Um, it's something that He's, he's played once this season. Sivir is still open, of course. Like, how does this really hurt SK Telecom? I feel like keeping the Corky away from SKT is not as good for KT as just taking Sivir, you know? Uh, I agree. I think KT should play to their strengths instead of trying to deny Bang. Sure, Bang has, Bang has an insane Corky win rate. He's 23 and 1 in his career. But to put that in perspective, Arrow is 9 and 14 on Corky for a less than 40% win rate. Yeah. Not sure this is when you bring out the Corky if you're KT Rolster. Hmm, is it where you bring out the Lucian if you're SKT, though? It's going to be the Rek'Sai, and yeah, they're going to lock in the Lucian as well. So Lucian, Rek'Sai, of course, we've seen Bang hard carry games on the Lucian, and he just wants a favorable 2v2 matchup against the Corky, which I think is very smart. We know Arrow's not a good Corky player. If Arrow gets dominated in lane by a Lucian, I don't think there's a way that Arrow really comes back on this Corky, a champion that he's not very good on to begin with. Yeah. Well, it's going to be Gragas and Thresh for KT. So at least Pickaboo still gets that champion. 
did make some plays with it, yes, uh, last game, even if it was leading into a loss. Uh, will they take the Shen away from someday? Honestly, the Shen has not seemed like a, a gigantic threat. It was, it was good in game one, not so great in game two. Can you just keep playing Denari here, maybe? Well, what's interesting is how far Maokai has fallen down. And why this is happening is because KT wants SKT to show their mid in their top laner right now because they don't want to give Marin a Fizz counterpick into their Maokai. Now, KT would right. love to play Maokai. They would love it. But that means SKT is just going to take the Maokai themselves. Now, this is dangerous because guess what? Someday's also a Fizz player. I, so, yeah. And we already know that SKT wants standard lanes because they want the Lucian going up against the Corky. I don't get surprised. You know, maybe they just want him to take that Fizz, too. Marin is saying, you know what? I can just play safe. I'm not going to give up kills to this Fizz. I learned my lesson in game one about playing unsafely. Are they not even going to counter pick it? They've got to be a bit intimidated by this. They're like, well, why would they pick the Maokai? They. They must have an answer to the Fizz, right? I guess. I mean, obviously, the Nar is still a very good pick into the Maokai. You can get a lot of harassment down on him and try and take his tower early. So they will be going in the very standard composition here. Yeah. They're a bit heavy on the magic damage, but that's okay. Uh, they have the Azir, which has been one of Nagne's best champions. We've seen it banned against him consistently, and it just like it was in game one of this series. Now, if these get locked in, which you would think they would be. Oh, okay, switching over to Shen. Uh, someday really, really liking that Shen tonight. Do you think this is a Varus situation for Faker? Ooh, probably not, because uh, there's a Gragas that's going to oh, yeah. remove you from the back line. Hmm. What do you play? And <laughs> Do you bring out the Velkaz? Yet another champion for Faker. I doubt it. Well... Honestly, with the AP changes, Velkaz is probably better than he was in previous patches. Yeah, but you'd think he'd be even more vulnerable to Gragas. Th Velkaz is actually good here because there are a lot of stuns from Maokai and Annie to keep people mobile while you ult them. True. Hmm. It's actually not, not a terrible pick, honestly. Ah, uh, it's just going to be Master Yi. <laughs> just, <laughs> just grab the Master Yi. Now, remember, Faker also likes to play Aurelia into Azir. Yeah, that's true. The mid Aurelia has been something he's had a lot of success with into this Azir pick. TF, ooh. Okay. Be fun to see Faker play TF, but it looks like it could just be that Victor. Safer pick. Yep, there it is, and Faker's Victor is pretty terrifying, too. Yeah, this has been his most played champion in the summer season. He's 6 0 on it so far this season. He is professionally undefeated on Victor. Yeah, I believe in the first round of this season, Victor was the only champion Faker played more than once. Yes. That is true. Yep. So, so there we have our lineups. A lot of damage coming in for both teams, potentially. It's interesting. Both teams very, very pokey, some decent engaged, decent pick potential. Who do you give the edge to here? SKT, because Faker's playing Victor. <laughs> well, I mean, just take away the players. <laughs> Forget the players. What do you think about the compositions um, for a moment? I think. Very standard compositions from both teams. You have decent engage from both sides. Uh, very poke based with Corky and Azir. Siege edge, maybe a little bit to KT, but I mean, frankly, these are just very well balanced standard compositions right now. There's not really too much to say about e either one until well, we get to see some action on the map. But what more could you ask for going into a game three? Yeah, but this is the thing about Faker's Victor, is we see how early he can get towers down and his roaming on this champion. Basically, he can take over an entire game by bullying the other uh, mid laner out, taking their turret, shoving them up to tier two, and then it free wards in the enemy jungle. Well, we'll see if he can do it again. Here it is, KT versus SKT. Who's gonna take it? Let's get in the game and find out. Okay, Telecom fans. And KT squaring off in the audience as KT and SKT square off on Summoner's Rift. Game number three. I'm glad it went to game three. Great game one by KT. Fantastic game two by SK Telecom. And now we have this.
Oh, we love you too. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Nothing but love. For anyone who comes all the way to Seoul, South Korea, there's a stun on to Pickaboo. Wow, that's a lot of damage early. They get the flash from Pickaboo. Well, wow, Bang was cutting him off yeah. right oh. there, so <laughs> there's he a was... wave goodbye with the flay. Now, uh, Pickaboo had the same positioning at level one in the last game, so actually they just reacted to it. Uh, they thought Pickaboo would be in that same forward brush, and they were able to surprise him with the stacked Annie W. So that's something that most likely Coma let them know about in between games. Hmm. Uh, and told them to run that level one. That's a good point. Uh, actually, they saw the, the ward go down into that brush in the last game, too. But that's a nice adaptation. I mean, free flash for the Ignite, you'll take that for sure. Yeah, definitely. In the meantime... Ooh, standard lanes. Yeah, Shen uh, really <laughs> far up in the enemy jungle right now. Someday kind of hanging out. He's just trying to disrupt sapling stacking. Which he did successfully. Might pay for it a bit. See if Faker wants to use the mana on the death ray. He does. Yep. It's going to make it a little bit annoying for someday, but shouldn't cause too much trouble. Yeah, it's nice. So. so they're just going to start laying even for all intents and purposes as the top laners head up there, making sure that there's not an XP advantage for the Maokai. Yep. And now Arrow. Hoping to raise his sub 40% win rate on this Corky. His worst out of his four most played champions. You know, and if you think it, uh, what a good time to try to do that would be against SK Telecom in Game 3 is probably not it. Whoa, Wolf being very aggressive here, taking some damage, but really zoning Arrow pretty hard. There's a stun on to Pickaboo for some trading. Don't really need to hold that for too long at level 1 just to make sure you, you uh, secure that level 2. Looks like they will get that, I think, slightly before KT will. Yep, there we go. Is that a Chroma Lucian skin? Oh boy! Oh wow, our first Chroma skin. It's not. He's red. It's the first one that you've been here for. Dylan. Oh wow. <laughs> I feel owned right now. Oh, 95% win rate is pretty good for Marin's Maokai, and he is one of the best Maokai players out there. That's only domestic play, too. He's 23 and 1 all time. Yeah. Score being very irritated by Bengi here in the jungle. Bengi stealing some of the smaller minions at the red camp. It's just weird to me. I mean, this is, actually it's not weird to me. These, this is just the conundrum that SKT presents, right? So you want to take the Maokai. Uh, wow, he gives it up. Huh. Well, what is he going to do? Faker's going to run in there, yeah. so is Wolf. This is what happens when you have this uh, lane dominance on the bottom side. You open up the map, so they actually have to give up the red buff. Score still has an opportunity to perhaps contest this. I mean, Bang is alone, so he takes the worst end of a trade. Yeah, I get that. Little XP advantage, oh, though. Oh, they're going to go for it. Yeah, oh, that's right. risky. Score coming in. Faker, oh, there's a stun onto Wolf. Wolf exhausted. First blood, though, goes to Wolf as he manages to take out Score. SKT chasing, Nogne can be in a little bit of trouble here. The knockup on the Nogne, and there's a kill for Faker to start things off. Bengi pulled nearly under turret, but it looks like it'll be fine. Oh, there's the anti on into Pinkaboo, and Marn picks up a kill. Oh, man, it is absolutely calamitous for KT here in the early part of this game. I don't think I've ever used the word calamitous in a broadcast before, but I'm glad <laughs> I got to use it once, and I think that was a good time to use it. It was a great time to use it. KT... They thought maybe they could turn that around, but unfortunately, SKT was already there in advance by the time Score tried to make that body slam play, and Nogne just didn't have the follow-up. But against a Victor and an Annie, fighting in some of these jungle chokes is a terrible play on early on. Yep. And that is exactly why. So KT, they got a little too big for their britches. Now they're 2K in the hole. Faker is 1-0 and 2 on this victor where he just shows absolutely no mercy with an, an advantage on this champion. He will just take over the game by himself. Yeah, this is, this is exactly the opposite of what KT needed to have happen in this game. This is a nightmare. I mean, I understand 
why they would tr make that, try and make that play, but their coordination just wasn't good enough to pull it off against the already grouped up SKT. And the fact that there were just two stuns sitting there in a choke point between Annie and the gravity field from Victor. You just don't have that level of control. We can also point to the fact that someday TP'd super late, uh, tried to get away without TPing, uh -oh. but then had to use it onto the turret. He was afraid that the dive was coming through. Speaking of dives, I thought Bengi was maybe going to try for something with Nognate's flash down in the mid lane, but he may just decide to do it after he takes Wolves. Oh no, this is the point where if you're SKT, all you do is start deep warding with Bengi. You know you have an advantage over score, and this means Fager can just wave clear very aggressively, start to auto the turrets, and you want that chip damage mm. so that Fager can start roaming. Well, mission accomplished so far. Nagne keeping up on CS, of course. Not too surprising. Giving Marin that kill in the top lane as well, too, is going to be very nice for SKT. Just picks up that second ring, and there's just nothing someday can do with that low wave there against a Marin that's ahead of him in lane already. Yeah, and especially this Shen, too. How is he going to get back in the lead? I, I yeah. think that someday has been overly hesitant in this best of three to use Stan United to make aggressive plays or to dive. If you have that shield, you might as well go for it. Oh, oh pick a oh. <laughs> Grab onto Wolf. Score. This could be a bit of a trouble. They're going to bring Score in as well. Nagne coming from the side. Yep, I think Wolf is in big, big trouble. Score picks up a kill. And Wolf learns the danger of warding, the danger of walking through your own jungle. Well, I mean, Peekaboo somehow got behind him. You can't reasonably expect, I think, a Thresh oh, yeah. to be sitting there waiting for you. That it was just a, happens, man. It was a clever play by Peekaboo, and Score was there to back him up so that at least they get a kill. They're still staring that 1,500 gold deficit in the face, though. Yep. So Sidestone for Pickaboo, which is going to be very nice to have at this point. Bang will just push the wave with the culling. And it looks like Faker's going to get his blue buff. No problem. So who will get that first dragon, though? That's the question. With a 1.5 gold lead, 1.5k gold lead so far, you'd think it'd be SKT again this time around. Yeah, you really would, especially since they have this Lucian and they have that pressure in addition to now having the advantage in the mid lane they they can really dictate when this dragon is taken pretty much score there just to try to protect Nagne a little bit he'll be okay yeah, Marin just going down getting another deep ward <clears throat> Bengi pretty free to do whatever he wants right now he can Try and clear out this pit, perhaps, once his lens comes back up. They could just try and solo the dragon. It might be a bit dangerous without some vision control first. Oh, he's gonna oh, get he it. missed oh, the hook. They're going to go in, and Arrow in a little bit of trouble here. Gets exhausted. They're going to throw the exhaust onto Bengi as well from Pikaboo. Here comes Wolf trying to do something. Someday not hesitant to teleport in there. Another knockup. Pikaboo trying to escape, and here comes Faker fighting in a choke again. Bengi going to barely live, and that's another kill for Faker. Wolf trying to power up that stun, but he's not going to find it on Arrow. You just can't fight in those narrow spaces against a victor, and Faker made it down there so fast. He gets down there extremely quickly, like you said, Doa, because he has the pressure on the mid wave, and someday committed to that, really, for the first time we've seen in this game. It was a near kill. Unfortunately, Arrow was just out of mana. And now the teleport has to be used back into the top side. Marin has TP advantage, so this should be a dragon for SK Telecom. Yeah, with that bottom lane pushed up by Bang's ultimate, they can probably go and take it pretty much whenever they want to. Everybody grouping up now. Well, SKT may want to actually back first and pick up some items for Bang before they do this, but I guess they're not going to do that. Bang faking the recall, but Arrow actually taking that bait, recalling himself, gets a sheen and some parts of a phage. Hmm. And SKT looking to set this up. Well, they really want to clear out all these wards, but it's going to be tough to. Ah, nice, avoiding that grab. That was that was a good bait from Pickaboo, actually. A lot of times you can do that, is throw the ward down to get him to come closer to take it. Nice try. SK 
KT is spending some time getting the vision down, but they're gonna wait a little bit for that dragon, it looks like. Here comes Someday. Trying to get behind Faker. Yeah, Faker knows that distance very well, though, so can't find that angle. And Nagne didn't want to commit with the flash. Of course, Someday wasn't anywhere close enough to be able to follow up on that. Well, it's so risky to try a play like that when you know Dragon is still up and your opponent's team has just gotten vision over it, too. It's a bit dangerous. I'm a bit surprised about that recall timing. Seems like SKT, if Bang had left a little bit earlier, would have had the opportunity just to go straight for the Dragon. Seems like they're playing it exceptionally cautiously they this are. game. I mean, look at this. They're just trying to bait them. They keep denying the vision. Here comes Score. He's going to have to check it with the barrel. But he doesn't see that that dragon is going down. And Bengi now just sitting on top of his red buff. Hmm. Score has no idea he's there. Doesn't look that way. Uh, yes, the patience of the Bengi. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, time for dragon. <laughs> Never mind. Yep. Well, we know it's going down now. Faker is seen by a ward in the river. Remember, Marn is has CP, but Someday now has Stand United back up. Well, look at all the chip damage onto that tower. Shen just has no wave clear in the early game. Yep. And so an easy first dragon taken by SK Telecom, already jumping out to a cool 2,000 gold lead. Yeah, waiting till they know score is occupied where Marin has the freedom to roam down without losing any CS, and if someday were to TP, he was gonna lose a wave into the turret, so it eventually is taken by SKT, their patience pays off, and they get it absolutely uncontested. That's right. A bang. Oh, he's caught up in CS just fine. Yeah, I mean, what can you say? SK Telecom from here on out. Probably just gonna play it fairly safely, fairly slowly, and take the fights that kind of come to them out of desperation from KT. Yeah, you have to believe that. So Righteous Glory now finished for Marin as we're seeing on the screen right there. Of course, it has been nerfed just a little bit in this patch 5.13. Just a little bit? Come on, man. All that health loss and the cooldown, yeah, it was, it's crazy. It was a big nerf. That was a big nerf. <laughs> just a little bit. You called me out, it's true. Huge nerf. <laughs> Sounds like the words of a jungle main to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You don't like being the you like being the super tanky support. That's that's right. I enjoyed it. Talisman gets me where I need to be though. It's fine. Now I can just have more of an excuse to build damage. More AP all the time. Yep, that's right. Kill those suckers who Dude. try and build the nerfed Righteous Glory, because they don't yeah. have any HP anymore, so it makes your AP items that much more effective from the support position. You just get uh get Rylice. That's the support now. A little bit of tankiness, and you get to slow people a ton. It's great. In fact, if I read the patch notes right, Tibber's AOE damage would actually slow because it says your pets yep. activated too now. So. Yep. So even after the stun wears away, you can just keep them slowed by keeping Tibbers on them. Well, we'll see if so Wolf builds in this game. <laughs> Something tells I know me I will. he'd rather have a Righteous Glory. Just get the Talisman. Talisman into Rylice. More health. The better, dream build. Slows. That's right. So I'm going to go for Because if there's one thing you need to do, it's actually survive on Annie. She really makes a big difference while she's running around the hey, fight with no cooldowns. If, get the, if the, you get the Rylize, you can do that damage. You can survive, and then it is important. Marin trying to survive as well. There's a flash headbutt. Whoa, twist advance right back in there. Marin has the flash. Still hasn't used it. Very, very low, backing away, and he doesn't even need to burn the flash. He has the glory to help him out, and that's enough to escape. I guess so. Well, Culling not doing a lot to Arrow, but it does force him away from the turret. A little bit more damage onto that one. Well, Nagne actually holding his own in the mid lane. Thanks to his playing of Azir, he hasn't actually been bullied too much by the victor. I'd love to see the tower HP on KT right now, but I don't think I'm going to get my wish. Nope. Sorry. It's time for dives. Do dive. Here we go. Pickaboo and Arrow. Can they stop this? Timbers dropped immediately. Pickaboo blown up very, very fast. He's still alive for now, though. As Shen comes in, they're going to get Thresh first. Pickaboo still goes down, and here comes Faker to clean everything up. Bengi can kind of stay out. 
Someday an arrow into the turret scores there as well. So SK Telecom backing off for the moment. They got one kill, and now <laughs> the bait begins. Oh, boy. There's wards there, so they know where they are. <laughs> yeah. Nice try. That wasn't going to work, unfortunately. With that ward in the river, they would have seen people exit Tribe Rush if they were Unless actually they going went to through be... your jungle. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you're probably not going to do that with five people, though. It, True. If no one comes out of that tri brush, it's a bit suspicious, isn't it? I think you could be a little bit concerned. It was a nice try. But again, Baker down there before Nogne can get there. His team setting up those plays well in advance. I mean, Bengi and Wolf were sitting there setting up that gank for a solid minute before they actually tried to execute it. Of course, Someday does have TP up now. So there is that factor. SKT going to be swapping Lucian into the top side, interestingly enough. I guess so. Very weird to see this lane assignment a minute and a half before Dragon. Wow, Faker goes all in on a Nognade. The Chaos Storm not going to be quite enough and the flashes for it. Nope. Thought maybe we were going to see the Flash Summoner Heal Death Ray there to finish him off. but uh, The old classic. Well, Mari oh, in yeah. big danger <laughs> of getting dove. Yeah, but it looks like the top turret's going to go down. So even if they lose Marin, it's not bad. He's going to go on to Arrow, push him back towards the turret, force the Valkyrie early on, and that may cost Arrow quite a bit, as a lot of members of SK Telecom are coming in behind score and Pickaboo. They get him out on the Lantern, but SKT right there. Okay, not quite close enough, though. Baker's just going to take the opportunity to do a lot of damage to that mid turret. So the lane assignment of Lucian in the top was so that he could get some more gold, get the tower down because they knew they had a wave building up there right before the dragon was going to spawn. So actually very nicely played by SKT, pick up some more advantages and they don't have to sacrifice anything at all when it comes to this dragon. It had already been chipped out so heavily by Morin. Yeah, thank you just taking the rest of Scores jungle too. Wow. SKT in pretty, pretty complete control of this game. Yes, they are. They picked for the lane dominant matchups. They've been rewarded with a 5K gold lead already by 18 minutes. It's too bad Lucian is such a bad champion. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, they would have won by now. Yeah, terrible. Absolutely yeah. awful. Only ahead in CS and kills and single handedly pushing down turrets. Wow. <laughs> what a weak champion that Lucian is. I don't know where that thought came from. It's so either. weird. Win rate in, in one region's bad, so it must be bad everywhere. Yeah, well, win rate with Rengar last year in LCS was terrible, but meanwhile, oh. Dandy was absolutely wrecking fools with him, so. Simple if-then statements. Oh, not quite catching anyone with that death sentence. It's KT, they're gonna follow up on this. Bang coming in. Just pushing KT away from that dragon. Wow, Pickaboo taking a lot of damage, and the culling. Pickaboo trying to dodge it, and he nearly, <laughs> nearly goes down. But some fancy footwork, and he doesn't get culled. All right, that was the uh, nice tremor sense culling right there, yep. trying to trap <laughs> people. It works. Very funny. Yeah. All right, well, Pickaboo lives to fight another day, but SK Telecom going to take their second dragon, it looks like. Very easy. With all that control on the bottom side of the map, they don't have anything to worry about. They also managed to get control over top uh -oh, side. Uh-oh, bang. bang in a little bit of trouble. Dodges a rocket. There's the scrying orb, though. Wolf trying to come in to save his AD carry. They get the flash out of Wolf. Yeah, flash and the... summoner's heal used yeah. from Bang and Wolf. So Still, though, SKT gets the dragon. Doesn't lose anybody. Not too bad. Yep, but the mid lane turret also going down to SKT. They immediately pop an Azir turret in there just so they can secure their own blue buff. If that Azir tower didn't go down, then probably a loss of the blue buff for KT as Vake would be very easily able to walk in there and contest it. Blue buff going to awkwardly slide back into his pit without moving <laughs> his feet. He's wearing roller skates now. Got a little skates. bit of fun, you know? Golem skates. Boulder skates. <laughs> well, KT in a bit of a predicament at the moment, to say the least. So when do you start baiting Baron? Probably about now. Yeah, maybe a bit early. Start to grab some vision, at least. 
We'll see. I think if you're SKT, you're perfectly happy with this Dragon lead. And now that the mid turret's down, the Azir passive is on cooldown. This is where you can start to dive more and more and more. Marin has his teleport up. You already have this edge. You have a you have the Trinity Force. You have the Annie stun locked and loaded. Why not just start to press forward and then make plays onto Arrow's Corky? Here we go. Yeah, there's teleport coming in from Marin just to secure this tier one turret and bot lane, and they will. So that is all three outer turrets taken by SK Telecom, and no turrets taken by KT yet. Yeah, that is a huge factor in this gold deficit that they've accrued to this point. Yep. Wow, just hammering that tier two as well. Faker's on the roam, gonna go up and save his tier one and top. Well, this is the power of Victor, that instantaneous wave clear. Really make sure that you're not going to well, He's going to use his way clear out of someday, I guess. <laughs> it's about sending a message, Monte Cristo. It's like, I don't even need to worry about my turret's damage. Now, coming back for KT now is going to be very challenging. They yeah. are really losing the vision game as a result of that mid lane turret being down. And Whoa. Nagde, very low after bang. It's a nice crit in. It certainly does work. He's got that Infinity Edge now. He's going to be doing a lot of damage. Home guard boots already for Faker. He really just wants to get back into lane and provide that wave clearing. Yeah, makes sense. Faker is a very good Victor player, but and you can tell that he is, of course, from his mechanics and the way he plays team fights. But for me, the, the best part about Faker playing Victor is that you just can't stop him from moving from lane to lane and wave clearing, which gives you no chance to come back into the game. Yeah. Basically, he plays this lights out style with his champion. And he abuses the wave clear. And it's not just the wave clear, it's the fact that he has the wave clear and it takes two people or more to actually kill him because Victor's damage is so high that he's able just to 1v1 people, or at least he'll do enough damage to make you leave the turret. That's pretty dangerous. And then he just autos it. it. It becomes very simple. And look at the wards. Once the mid lane turret goes down, they get the wards in. Now they're just going to try the Baron. Wow, yeah, 23 minute Baron. And so far, KT has no idea. They're going to give him the tier one and bottom for it. I'd say at this point, it's a pretty good trade. Wow, Faker just distracting KT so much. It looks like they're going to get it, unless score comes in right now. And he's zoning Wolf, trying to keep him away. They're going to get the stun down. There's the gravity shield. Score barely body slams out in time, but it is a Baron for SK Telecom. Just incredibly deceptive and incredibly smooth. Uh, you have Lucian. He just got the static shift. You've got enough damage, and you have the tankiness with the Maokai to take that objective. So go ahead and do it. Wow, Faker even chips away the tier two. SK Telecom coming in with some very impressive macro play. And this is why you just can't let Faker have Victor, because yeah. there's you just can't get him off your towers. It seems like every game, though, at some point we say, this is just why you can't let Faker have the next champion. And like, at what point, what do you do? Other than just kind of roll over and die. It's that tough. Is. I think, I mean, Nagne held on longer than a lot of other players have to that mid lane tower, oh, but certainly, yeah. ultimately it just wasn't enough. And now someday, had to flash out of that little engagement as Bang starts to run rampant through the enemy jungle with the Baron buff and the red buff. Yep, he can do it every once now as well, too. They've got so much wave clear, they can push all of these lanes so fast. Yep. Varn pushing bottom as well. It's not really great wave clear from this Shen, so as long as they execute a 1 3 1, not going to be very problematic. Yeah. And Arrow's Corky has just been non existent this game, too. A lot of damage onto that tier two. And Marin, someday just can't stop him. There goes the turret. Wow. Well, he's got some magic resist now. He's able to withstand Shen. Yeah, you can't just ignore him. Whoa, trying to go in. Chaos Storm drop, pick a a lot of trouble. Exhaust onto Marin. Arrow goes deep, gets brought in actually. Faker with a kill there. I don't know what Corky was doing in that situation. And SKT gonna catch somebody right on the edge of the base, but not quite kill him. They'll take out the tier two. Whoa, Faker manages to pick off Nogne before being moved over by the explosive cast. Now they're gonna go in onto score. Prey Seeker hits him, but it's gonna be an inhibitor. 
for SK Telecom. Yeah, 25 minutes into this one, inhibitor already going down. SKT just making the most out of this Marin buff. Wow. Bang, not really threatened, even though there's armor on Shen, has gone for the QSS. No taunting from Shen onto him will be successful, and Faker just gobbling up more of the map right now easily. Well, we talked about this happening right after Faker got that first kill of the game. I mean, if you let him get ahead, this is what he will do on this champion. Oh, they're gonna try and TP play onto him. Yeah, Wolf and Faker there though. Wolf should have the stun fairly soon. Someday trying to make a kill there. There's the stun for Wolf. He can use it whenever he needs to. They might not even need to though. They're just gonna back away. Yeah, he's got the movement speed from the Q, so there's no need to dump it. Yeah. Maybe they can dive this actually. Wolf doesn't have Tibbers. Oh, uh, Powered Recall is gonna get him out of there so fast. Well, also, Bengi just void rushed into that side of the jungle. So that yeah. made a dive attempt significantly less attractive. And if you're KT, you have to make some kind of play right now. And also, that's a good time to do it because you know that even though there's a huge cold lead for SKT, they haven't actually spent a lot of that money because of how many turrets they just recently knocked down. Sure. So, in terms of amount of money actually contained within items that has been used and turned into statistics wasn't that bad but it is now it is now yep. yes it is yeah and that's a 12,000 gold lead so SKT even farther ahead this game than they were last game that is it Marin might as well just start tossing saplings into the goal in his head <laughs> Kind of hanging out. Just scoring against himself. I guess so. Well, I don't I don't know what to say anymore, Doa. I think that KT was the last real chance for somebody to stop at least SKT from going undefeated in the regular season here. Right. They put up they played a damn good game one. They were really in did. From Marin. Unless SKT gets really lazy in these coming matches, they are going to go undefeated in the regular season. They're going to go right on to score, completely catching him. Pretty tanky, though, so he's going to make it out for now. Someday burns his ult, though, to do that. And that's going to be another inhibitor down in favor of SK Telecom. And KT just can't engage. So much damage coming in from, like, basically everybody on SK Telecom. Yep, and they're just methodically shutting this game down. KT only able to get that single kill this game. Yeah and they've just fallen so far behind. And SKT just really got the ball rolling with that fight in the enemy jungle. They did an intelligent invade, one that KT really wasn't able to contest. KT overcommitted to a fight that they didn't really have much hope of winning. Oh, Marin really on his own here, and everybody's going to jump onto him. Box used a lot of ultimates burned for this. Bengi going to come in to try to save them. Fairly tanky, though. Marin is still alive. He is, his health is not moving anymore. Wow, OK. Bengi just backs away. Marin's like, yeah, man, I was fine. Thanks for coming, but I didn't need you. Meanwhile, Bang and Faker on the bottom Whoa. side. Faker, Bang gets pushed in by Nogne's ultimate. They actually get the kill on it, but Chaos Storm doing a lot of damage to Nogne, nearly taking him down. Well, they got Bang. SKT getting a little bit greedy. They're trying yeah. just to distract people on the top side while they take the bottom, but Nogne makes a play. Didn't even have to use Flash was down, it was on cooldown at the time, but he still manages to get Bang into his turret. Yeah, a bit of an error there. But they've certainly got room for error at this point. Well, it's gonna be about it. Everybody going to recall at the moment for SKT. Just go ahead, get some more items. Make sure that they're that much further ahead. Yeah, and when Baron comes up in 45 seconds, SK Telecom is going to be very, very ready to take that. Oh, Faker with the giant spell. Hmm. Rylize. It's pretty good with uh, Death Ray. Get the slow off of it, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I think he also just wants the survivability right now. If he can't oh, be bursted too. down, then there's nothing going to stop him from doing sustained damage over the course of the team fight. Certainly, Rylai's not an item that we typically see on Victor, but it does give him increased chasing power with that Q. Basically, his dueling is ridiculous because you'll be slowed and he'll speed up. You cannot run away from him. Yeah, he'll have more health and more catches. Catching, catchability. 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 Just add it to the League of Legends dictionary right there. That's right, we need a separate one. Oh, someday. 
Comes in. Ah, death sentence for Pickaboo. Ah, quite connecting. And here we go. SK Telecom coming in under this one. Marin gets flayed away, but they do catch Nogne. Bang in a little bit of trouble. He's going to go down again. Nogne picks him off, but then Faker gets him with the Chaos Storm. Someday flashing over the wall. Faker's going to go ahead and chase. Going to get a turn on to Arrow. There's a double kill for Faker. Goodbye, Pickaboo. You are in big, big trouble now. Triple kill for Faker. They're going to keep going. They can just end it right here, I think. Yeah, Super Minions in the base, but Faker still wants Whoa, this. Oh, yeah. He's not going to get it. No. No, Penta. No Quadra or Penta. But there go the Nexus turrets. Martin just zoning while his team takes it. And so, a very strong game number one. Woo! A very strong game number one from KT to make SKT sweat a little bit. But in the end, SK Telecom T1 will take the match with a 2 1 victory. There it is, GG. Well, that was the first time that anyone has made SKT sweat this season. It was yes, the it first is. time anybody had taken a game one against them. SKT had to make some decisions, come back. KT just couldn't respond. And it was a very interesting series, especially game one and game two. This last game was tough on KT Rolster, but they honestly gave SKT more of a run for their money than anybody else has. Yeah, yeah, last game was pretty one-sided, but Again, you can't, you can't make those mistakes early against Faker's Victor, otherwise you see exactly what we just saw.